losing streak really solidified their spot in the standings. They went from out of the playoff picture to on top of both Bossier, Shreveport, and Tulsa by five points. So if the Brahmas can pick up a win tonight, as well as a couple wins next week, should be, be looking good as far as playoff-wise goes. But and it's going to be a great battle. And in the Southern Conference, Austin and Odessa are battling for 1-2. The Ice Bats, one of the toughest teams in the Central Hockey League. Yeah, Austin's been a great team all season long. They've, they've raced out to a 39-15-5 record. They got 83 points on the season. San Antonio is right on their heels, but if Austin can get a couple wins, they're going to really solidify themselves in that two spot, and they'll have the all-important home ice advantage in that first round. It's going to be a great battle. Also, keep in mind that El Paso is leading Lubbock by just three points, excuse me, New Mexico by just three points for that fourth and final spot. So keep your eyes on that race as we go down the final week of the regular season. And of course, tonight, a lot of players to watch for the Brahmas. This guy has been terrific. The offensive leader, Joe Van Volsen. Yeah, Joe Van Volsen, what can you say about smoking Joe? I mean, jump on his back is what he's saying to the boys in the room before the game. He's got, you know, last 10 games, six goals, eight assists, 21 goals, 41 assists on the season. He's the Brahmas leading scorer. He's a quiet assassin. The, the minute you take your eyes off him, he's going to put the puck in the back of the net. He's, in my mind, one of the top five players in the Central Hockey League, and he's having a great year for Fort Worth. And the Brahmas are going to have to watch out to the Austin Ice Bats, a very dangerous offensive team led by the gentleman who's tied for the scoring lead in the Central Hockey League. Brett Sagan, 87 points. He's got soft hands. I mean, his hands are softer than his ba baby's backside. So, I mean, he can set you up. He can score goals. And he's got two wingers that he's playing with in Price and Talaire that can put the puck in the back of the net quickly. So, watch. If the Brahmas are going to win tonight, they're going to need control Sagan and keep Price and Talaire from finding opportunities to score. And tonight should be exciting. The Brahmas expect one of their largest crowds in franchise history. And why not? New Jersey night. The kids and families are out. The Brahmas looking to clinch a playoff spot. Should be extremely exciting tonight. Let's get her going, Mike. I'm jumping around here in the booth. I'm fired up, ready to drop the puck and get after it. Well, tonight, the Brahmas and the Ice Bats coming up the play-by-play -play in just a moment. Fort Worth Brahmas Hockey on Channel 52. I gotcha. Is my level okay? Okay, which volume do I turn up? Would it explain to me just probably a real dumb question here, but interrupt and uh, Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, I got it. They're hard to see them. <laughs> Is this mine, yours? Uh, that one's yours. This one's mine. Hey, David. David, can you get me one more? Other Dave. <laughs> we got a David Boyd up here. See, that's why you want to pre-tape the open, and you don't risk. Yeah, you're right. That's exactly why. That's you never know what's going to happen. Have you ever done the open? Go ahead, Dave. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes, yes. I'll lead you into it. Okay. How'd the open go? I didn't see it. I went okay, yeah. Did we look? Yeah, we looked pretty good. That's my guy, David.
welcome back to the Fort Worth Convention Center tonight. The Brahmas and the Austin Ice Bats. A great crowd tonight, and we should be in for a lot of excitement. Uh, Fort Worth, as mentioned, with a victory tonight, can almost solidify their uh, playoff spot. And of course, the Ice Bats have been in the playoffs for a while, Jeff, but they are a very, very dangerous opponent. Yeah, for, it's, a, it's a tale of two teams that are both after the same goal, the President's Cup. The Ice Bats have been chasing it all season long. They've been one of the top teams overall in the league all year long, right from the get-go. The Brahmas kind of started out real fast, hit a little bump in the road mid-season, but are really turning it on late as of the second half here. They've won six out of the last seven, seven out of the last ten. They're peaking at the right time, and the Brahmas, uh, Mike, as we'll get into it over the course of the broadcast, are looking for their first playoff berth in three seasons. So it's, uh, it's a critical game for each team. Austin, they're trying to hang on to that su Southeast Division lead. The Brahmas trying to hold on to that third spot uh, and stay ahead of Bossier Shreveport in Tulsa. So basically, Mike, this one's a playoff game. I expect playoff intensity. Got a great atmosphere tonight at the Convention Center and uh, should be exciting hockey. Well, let's take a look at the Coors starting lineups. Tonight's starting lineups are brought to you by Coors, the official beer of the Fort Worth Brahmas. First looking at the visiting Austin Ice Bats dressed in their white sweaters tonight. Up front, number seven, Kelly Smart. On a wing is number 10, Bobby Brown. Brown, of course, spent a good part of the season with the Houston Arrows of the American Hockey League. He's a super, super talented player. He's dangerous from any spot on the ice, so he's one the Brahmas are definitely going to have to watch. Also up front for the Ice Bats, big center, number 26, Jeff Greenlaw. Greenlaw, of course, an ex-NHL player, played with both the Florida Panthers and the Washington Capitals. Great size in front of the net. Uh, on defense for the Ice Bats, number 22, Dale McArthur, and also on the back end, number 16, Mike Gaffney. For your Brahmas up front, let's go with number 10, Sean Hughes. Hughes on the wing. Peter Campbell, number 14, had a hat trick on Wednesday against Indy. He's centering. Right side, number 28, Jason Clark. On defense for the Brahmas, number 3, Adam Davis, and number 4, Dave Bork. job of our national anthem here at the Fort Worth Convention Center. The Brahmas with a record of 17-9 and 2 at home. 29-23 and 7 overall and a look uh, from behind the net. We'll see a couple of goaltenders here tonight that have had stellar seasons both for the Fort Worth Brahmas and for the Austin Ice Bats. And uh, Jeff, uh, the goaltenders as mentioned have been terrific for both Fort Worth and for Austin. The goaltender is going to play a major, spart, major part in the, sto in the story for tonight for the Brahmas. Specifically in that is Super Cooper, number 29, Corey Cooper. Cooper with 27 wins on the season, 21 losses. He leads the CHL in, in saves with 1,730 second in minutes. He's been a workhorse all season long for the Brahmas. 56 starts and 59 games so far for Fort Worth. Turning our attention to Brian McMullen for Austin, the other starting all 
star goaltender. McMullen's 27-7-3 overall. He's got a 2.37 goals against average. That's third in the league and a .917 save percentage. So McMullen definitely, if not as good as Cooper, uh, capable of uh, carrying the load for the ice bats. These two goaltenders, Mike, the, the opposing starters in the uh, All-Star game back in Corpus Christi in February. So we got an All-Star cast in net, and uh, they'll definitely play a big part in the hockey game. Well, if, uh, as mentioned, he has been a workhorse also in the 39 games this year, a 2.57 goals against in a fifth-year pro. It's a look from the back of the Austin Gold, the Fort Worth Convention Center. There's uh, the U.S. flag. There will be a tremendous crowd, perhaps the largest in Brahma's history, on our uh, youth uh, jersey tonight, youth jersey night. And, uh, Jeff, a lot of the families and kids, as you can take a look, a family atmosphere here at the Convention Center. Yeah, they all came out for those youth jerseys. Uh, Radio Disney, KSCS 96.3. Put their names on the back of the jerseys. Great giveaway. I mean, it's good to see this building full, and I expect it to be rocking all night long. Brahma's in the first period will be going from left to right. The referee is Gordy Dwyer. Brian Bull and Doug Wittig are the linesmen. Fort Worth looking for their 18th win of the season at home. Their 30th of the season looking for points number 66 and 67. Up front, Peter Campbell. And here we go against the, uh, Kelly Smart, and immediately the Brahmas cleared in for the Austin zone. The Brahmas have won just one game this season against the Bats. 1-4-2, outscored 26-15. And back at his own side is Adam Davis for Fort Worth. Along the near board for Dave Bork, clears the center, and the Bats just clear it right back into the Fort Worth zone of the Brahmas control. Watch, it, watch each team try to kind of feel each other out over the first couple minutes of this hockey, and you'll see a lot of dump and chase Fort Worth without some key players by just 13 skaters, so the Brahmas going to play a lot of defense tonight and try to be opportunistic offense. Young defenseman Gaffney check. Brahma's in front. Hughes is shot. And I believe uh, McMullen got a piece of that. It's cleared away. And Kelly Smart uh, breaks out uh, the other way for Austin. Clears it in. Cooper back the other way. Plays for Jason Clark. A long slap shot off the backboards and wide. The teams change up. Hughes in a four check. And the bats come up with it in a center ice. Just underway. Glad you joined us tonight. Channel 52. The Brahma's first broadcast on KFWD TV. We're excited about that and glad you've joined us here tonight. Ice Bats in their white uniforms trying to clear at the center and they bang it right back into the Fort Worth zone. Cooper himself likes to play the puck and does to center ice. Yeah, you'll watch Cooper do that all night long. He's like having a third defenseman back there. He can move the puck probably better than some of our defensemen, but uh, he can really set up other players to start the breakout. Cooper just turned 25 years of age and the Brahma's control, Van Volsen. Deep pass up the middle and it's a two-line offside from inside the Fort Worth blue line to the Austin side of center ice. Todd Ballon has to be happy about his start for the Brahmas. Uh, Sean Hughes with a scoring chance moments ago. Bottom of the right side, great centering pass from Peter Campbell. Hughes didn't, didn't quite get all on, uh, on that shot that he wanted to. McMullen was ready for the save, but there was a rebound opportunity. Well, that's what, what, one of McMullen's tendencies. He gives up some fat rebounds, so if the Brahmas can get the puck on net, they should have some follow-up opportunities. Face-off will be just inside the line. Peter Kava who joined the Brahmas uh, earlier this season. Jason Clark on the right wing side. Fort Worth. Again, one victory this season against the Bats. Also on the left wing side for Fort Worth, Craig Johnson, who can play forward and defense. A clearing shot to center ice and back after Bork for Fort Worth. Plays it free into the center ice area and the Bats control at their own blue line. And it is Greg Willard, the defenseman, plays to center. And a chance for Tab Larkin into the Fort Worth zone. The youngster centers right through the goal crease. Nobody home. The Brahmas try to clear it out. Can't. Bats keep it in back behind the Fort Worth goal and Sumer to the Brahmas, clears to the blue line, but big Craig Johnson for Fort Worth, plays to center, and the bats just clear it right back in on right wing. Yeah, right. This, this third line for Austin, LaRock, Lardner, and Anderson, they played well against Fort Worth last week up here, and uh, look for Brent Hughes to give them some extended ice time here tonight. Brent Hughes is the Austin coach. We'll uh, take a look at Brent as the night uh, progresses. Greg Rollers now for Austin, plays to center ice, and the bats on the attack. This is their big line as... Uh, Smart able to clear it in on offside with 17.36 left in the opening period. No score. And the uh, faceoff will be in the neutral zone. A look at uh, Young Willers, a 22-year-old defenseman out of Aurora, Ontario, third-year pro. And they have kind of a good combination on Austin of youngsters and veterans. Yeah, Austin has an affiliation with the Houston Arrows of the American Hockey League. They get players from time, time to time assigned to them by Houston. Bobby Brown is one. Willers is another one that really adds to their depth of talent on the Austin roster. 
And the ice baths uh, with a whopping 83 points this year cleared into the Fort Worth zone. And the Brahmas control back of the net. Adam Davis for the Brahmas on the right wing side for Bork. They're the defensive pairing on this unit. Plays to center ice and a chance for Van Volsen, the leading scorer for Fort Worth. In center. Oh, and a save by McMullen on the great centering pass to Brent Culleton, and he was robbed. What a save by McMullen. Write that one down. McMullen makes the first big save of the hockey game. But there's the offense from Van Volsen that we were talking about in the open. And a play to center ice and smart for Austin. Spanks it right back into the Fort Worth zone. Ice bats in deep to four check. No score. First period. Brahmas with the best scoring chance, however. And Fort Worth gained possession at their own defense. And here comes Culleton in for Fort Worth. Left wing side pass across the line. Chance for Willard. Centers one right through the goal crease for Campbell. And finally, it's broken up with the Austin defense and wound to center. Big hit over there into the Austin zone. Yeah, Willard just lit up Tolera. And that's how you got to play Gerald Tolera. He's a fast player, but he's small and the Brahma's bigger forwards can look to take it to him all night long. Ice bats control at their own defense, a clearing pass intercepted. Culleton steals, he shoots high over top of the net. Great uh, scoring chance for Fort Worth's Culleton. The ice bats clear it down the ice. We should have an icing. Hughes is there, barely wins the battle. Icing is the call here in the first period. No score, 16-13 left in the opening fray. And the, uh, let's take a look at that last scoring chance for Fort Worth. Great setup in front. Yeah, it was a turnover by Austin in their own and Culleton gloved it down, looked a pass, but then he went ahead and shot, shot it just wide. He tried to go high stick on McMullen. McMullen goes down real early. Culleton waited, had McMullen commit, just couldn't get, couldn't get it on net. But that's a great chance for the Brahmas. That's the kind of opportunities they're going to need playing with just 13 skaters tonight. McMullen is uh, large, 6'2", 195 pounds. He'll make you shoot wide. <laughs> Here's uh, Tilson, right point, slap shot, kicked aside, rebound in front wide. The net is actually off its moorings as McMullen was down and out into the Austin goal crease, and the Brahmas continue to pepper McMullen, who is in his 40th game of the season. You mentioned uh, a lot of activity in front of the goal. If he goes down, that could open, obviously, uh, some room up top. A player like his size, he's been taught early to go down and use his, his frame to take up space in the net. And you'll see the Brahma's players try to pick and choose their spots, maybe a little too fine. That might have been what Culleton did a moment ago. He tried to pick that very top corner of the net, shot it just wide, but Fort Worth's off to a great start, Mike. They're all over the, Brahma, all over the ice bats early. Van Volsen and Woolert and Culleton. So far, the Brahma's three shots on goal. The ice bats have yet to register a shot officially on Corey Cooper. And it's cleared right back into the Fort Worth zone. Sumerick for the Brahmas. Checked off in the play. Eric LaBelle, a rookie, tries to work it in front. Cooper, the save on Tab Lardner, also a youngster, a rookie in this league. And the Brahmas clear it right back in. So Cooper tested in the slot. Big save by Cooper. He's into the game now. Here's a play now in the center ice. Uh, no score. First period, the lock clears it right back in. There have been no power plays so far. No penalties. And a total of four shots on goal. And two of those have been terrific scoring chances. Uh, one for both the, uh, the Brahmas and the Ice Bats. Here's Davis on left wing. Trying to clear it through to the blue line. Pokes it to center. And the Ice Bats, LaRock, drops it free. 15-11 left first period. No score from the Fort Worth Convention Center. Central Hockey League action. The Brahmas and the Bats from Austin. Here's Sumerick near corner. Tries to work it free to Culleton. Stolen by Smart on his back. He shoot. Blocked by Davis. Rebound. Greenlaw in front. Oh, oh my God. God. Unbelievable save on Jeff Greenlaw. Are you kidding me? What a glove save by Cooper. Cooper went down early. Greenlaw had the backhand. Kind of rolled on him a little bit, but he went up high. And Cooper was able to, able to throw the glove up. Big save by Corey Cooper. That's why he is the Brahma's go-to guy in net. We'll take a look at a bit. No score, Brahmas and the Ice Bats on KFWD TV 52.
be this quick. Yeah, okay. action and how about this save by Corey Cooper on the ice and ice bats Jeff Greenlaw yeah Greenlaw's a big player and he takes up a lot of space between the circles there that loose puck just kind of found him he had it on his forehand he tried to go high and Cooper just threw up the quick glove that's where goals go to die here the Florida Convention Center Corey Cooper's big glove that's a huge save for the Brahmas Cooper keeps it scoreless Cooper more minutes more shots against more saves than any other netminder in the Central Hockey League and still has a sparkling 3.11 goals against average Brahma's play of three on the left wing side. Sean Hughes for Jason Clark, and he spins it into the neutral zone, and the Ice Bats gain possession. 14 and a half minutes left, first period. Great crowd here in Fort Worth. As the Brahma's and the Bats from the convention center. Austin play at the center ice. Clark steals, and a stoppage of play. It looks like our first penalty on the play on the far side. Looks like it's going to be a rough on Adam Davis. Davis coming in high on the Ice Bats player. I believe that was LaBelle on the far side. Davis kind of leading with his, oh, sorry, that was Brownlee for uh, Austin coming up that right side, and uh, Davis hit Brownlee from behind, and the reason they called that a roughing penalty fight was because Brownlee was in three feet of the boards. He wasn't facing the player. That's an automatic call for referee Gordy Dwyer, and that's a, a penalty that Davis, I'm sure, would want back, but you got to like his aggression, the young rookie. He has played terrific for Fort Worth. Last year played in the uh, North American Hockey League with the Texas Tornado. The Brahmas on the penalty kill this year fared okay. Uh, 59 for 315. They rank ninth in the league at an 81%. The Ice Bats number one. 51 on the power plays for 222. 22.9%. That's best in the league. Yeah, Austin's dangerous with weapons like Sagan, Talaire, Price, and Brown. They don't need any help sitting on an extra man. You can see if this is a big kill for Fort Worth early. Here's Talaire on the right wing side for the Ice Bats. Back of the goal, the forward Price tries to center one, but Mike Tilson, a third-year Brahma defenseman, plays it free to the near side, and Clark able to wind it right back to center ice and deep into the Ice Bats zone. Big kill for Fort Worth here. As they are under man, that first goal is pivotal tonight, and the Brahmas need to kill this one off and uh, kind of get some confidence get entrenched defensively. Here is Tilson for the Brahmas. Leaves it free. The Brahmas clear, but not out at the right point. A shot. Cooper to save. Daniel Titro let it fly for the right point. There were two Austin players in vicinity, and Cooper says no. Cooper Cooper, the big save on Tetro. Tetro, a very, very, very skilled defenseman. In fact, I voted for him for Outstanding Defenseman of the Year. He got a shot from straight, straight away there, right side. A low, hard shot from the point. Good work by Johnson in front to clear out any traffic. Allowed Cooper to see that one all the way and made the glove save. I like Craig Johnson's aggressiveness in front of the net. That's the kind of message you need to send to Austin is you stay away from the crease and keep, keep out of the way of Corey Cooper. The Ice Bats has mentioned a dangerous power play unit. Fort Worth trying to clear it free, and they succeed. So twice, they just immediately cleared it into the Austin territory. Faceoffs are the key, Mike. That was a key defensive zone faceoff win by Peter Cava for the Brahmas. Here's Willers, the defenseman for the Bats. Clears it right back into the Fort Worth territory. It bounces on edge like a beach ball. In the work of play, smart now for the Bats. In deep to try to make it. There are four players in the scrum. Finally, it uh, scores free, and the Brahmas break in the center. Here comes Cava on his off wing, in across the line, now tries to split the defense poke check, but a great play by Fort Worth and McMullen. That's Fort Worth player Willard collide, a penalty coming up, I think, against Fort Worth. Greenlaw hit on the play by Kava. It's loose, there's a delayed penalty, an empty net, a chance for the Ice Bats. Saved by Cooper on the shot by Greg Willers on the empty net with the sixth attacker, and now pushing and shoving in front of the net with Greenlaw. Dan Villeneuve, who's no stranger to the penalty box as well. Greenlaw, former Washington Capitol, and... Yeah, Greenlaw and Villeneuve, eye to eye there, and then you can trust they're not exchanging Easter greetings. Right. But uh, Greenlaw's not afraid, and you got to respect Dan Villeneuve. He's a veteran defenseman for the Brahmas. He'll get in somebody's face and send a message. The, the penalty coming up here, Mike, is going to be a goaltender interference call to Chad Willard. Willard was just cruising down that right side. Didn't mean to run into Brian McMullen. McMullen, if we can get a replay here, we'll see that momentarily. But McMullen was at top of his crease. And as Woolard crossed in front of the crease, his legs became tangled with McMullen. That's a goaltender interference penalty on Woolard. And the Brahmas are going to be down two men for the next 22 seconds. Let's take a look at upcoming. And there's the end result, the spill. But here's the beginning of that play. Yeah, Cava coming through neutral ice there. One move too many there at the blue line. Kind of got the puck stuck in his skates. Woolard was crashing the net looking for a shot. 
and you'll see him screaming down that right side. As McMullen stand up, stood up, he kind of came out of the edge of his crease, and that's why Lalonde is displeased with this call. He's got referee Dwyer over by the Gramas bench now, and he's saying if McMullen's going to come out of the crease to be aggressive, he's fair game, and that's Lalonde's argument right now. But nonetheless, Wooler to the box, two for goaltender interference, and the Brahmas down two men. And for the next 22 seconds, Mike, this is, could be a pivotal time in the game early. This faceoff is key here. Look for Van Bolsen to take the draw for the Brahmas. This is not what Todd Lalonde wants. Noting Fort Worth started the game with 13 skaters, two men in the box, but immediately they get the draw. Beautiful off the faceoff. Smoking Joe right on cue. That was Van Volsen. Here's the play on the right wing side. Five on three for 13 seconds now. Here's Bobby Brown. Very dangerous in front. Shoots one. Cooper. A save. Rebound. And it's the, the net is knocked off its moorings as the right post is off. And the bats had a couple of cracks at it, but Cooper held that goal crease area and kept the puck out of the net. Good work by Cooper and net for the Brahmas. He had to move post to post there across the crease. First shot, the first shot came from the right side here. We'll take a look at it on the replay. That was uh, Sagan down low, right side, bottom of the circle, Cooper stood tall. The rebound came over to LaRock down low on the left side, and Cooper was able to slide post to post, slam those leg pads together and keep it out. Here's play at the point, Tetro. Now, between the circles, leaves it free. First player, Davis is back on. It's now a one-man power play. Brown, right point, Tetro shoots, caught by Corey Cooper. Tetro let it fly from the left point. He's a 22-year-old from Manitoba, and Cooper saw it all the way. That's what you want. There was no screen in front as we take Take a look on that last uh, scoring opportunity. Well, really, that's what both teams want. You want to give Tetro the shot from the point, but the Brahmas did a good job of keeping that area in front of the crease uh, clear of traffic, and Cooper's aggressive, Mike. You'll notice when he's on his game, he's aggressive. He's out of the crease. He's got that head bobbing the glove moving around. That's a good save for Cooper off a good shot by Tetro. Here's play at the right point. The ice bats try and work it free, but the Brahmas intercept at the defense board just clears it down. No relation to Ray Bork, but Davis played well on the back line for Fort Worth. Yeah, I've been uh, trying to explain to people all year that he's not Bork's brother, but I just hope he plays like him a little bit. But he's been really good over the last couple months of the season for Fort Worth. He's going to be key down the stretch for the Brahmas. And he is more of a defensive player than an offensive threat, but he still plays very well on the defense for the Fort Worth Brahmas. Here's Tolaire. Up the center ice, leaves it free into the Fort Worth zone, but the Brahmas back-checking intercept and beautifully just poke it Campbell all the way down into the Austin zone. Good penalty killing by the Brahmas. Not, just kind of clogging things up, neutral ice, not allowing Austin to get set up. Here's a play to the blue line. No score, first period, 11.31 left in the first. 40 seconds left in the penalty. And the ice bats work it free in a two-man rush on this power play. They set it up on the far boards. Ian LaRock tries to jam it loose. The mad scramble, it's clear to the left wing point. Ice bats now play to the right point as the Brahmas keep them on the perimeter. Austin's trying to work it in front. Play to the right wing point. Again, third along the far side, back of the net. Ian LaRock tries to dump it in front of backhand. Right for the goal crease, nobody home. Willers paws it down and a stop again the net dislodge. That's actually been fortunate for a fortunate situation for the Brahmas with the ice pass buzzing into the zone, into the Fort Worth territory, down to 13 seconds left in that penalty. Well, when that net goes off the mornings, Mike, that gives the Brahmas a good 30, 45 seconds to catch their breath. And as we've stated a couple times in the broadcast, Fort Worth with just 13 skaters tonight, Cardwell, Libel out with injury, Bateman on assignment, so the Brahms a little bit undermanned. They'll take all the extra stoppages they can get. And Mike, we need to talk about the big captain out there, Craig Johnson. What a shift for him killing this penalty. He's throwing about three or four good hits along the wall. And Craig, he's a physically imposing guy. He can scare guys, and we need him to play aggressively, aggressive like this throughout the course of the game. No score, 11 minutes left in the first. Promise clear at the center. That's uh, down to 10 seconds left in the penalty. Curling around is Dominic Perriar, a defenseman. Four seconds left, that's gonna do it on the penalty. And back on for Fort Worth, Chad Willard. The Brahmas kill off a two-man power play and Willard steals. Right side, Van Volsen, in across the line. He pulls up, centers for uh, Willard, but broken up in the ice pass, break the center. Into the Fort Worth zone, Gerald Tolaire broken up at the Fort Worth blue line. And Johnson winds to center, Campbell steals, and dumps it to the Austin defense. Good defensive move by Johnson on the poke check. Tolaire's a speedy guy, but Johnson was able to use his long reach, poke the puck off Tolaire's stick. And the ice bats control, 10-20, left first period. No score from the convention center in Fort Worth, Texas. That's right, hockey over here in Cowtown as the Brahmas take on the bats. Lead pass to center for Campbell broken up and then 
Austin just cleared right back in. So play from blue line to blue line. The bounce change on the fly. Yeah, Fort Worth with a great kill moments ago. Now they need to get a little offense there. Take advantage of the momentum that they picked up from killing off that two-minute advantage by the bats. Here's Dan Volanov in his second stint for Fort Worth. Clears it free and across the line. And then the ice bats wind it deep into Fort Worth territory. This should be an icing. 9.46 left first period. No score. And we'll take a break. No score. You're watching Fort Worth Promise Hockey. Throw one in. Give me, uh, give me one. You, you tell me, because we're gonna go by. How about uh, visit the Brahma's website? Unless you want to do promo billboards or in-game billboards, whatever you want to do. How about the website, if that's easy? Okay. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, okay. Mike Merrick and Jeff Bowerman from the convention center. No score, Brahmas and the Bats. Uh, folks, don't forget, visit the Brahmas website at brahmas.com for the latest in Brahma's information. That's www.brahmas.com, the official website of the Fort Worth Brahma's. Jeff Barman, you're involved with that. Lots of information and tidbits on that uh, website. We try to keep it as current as possible. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're online, check out our site, catch up on all the action with the Brahma's, and uh, there's some great photos on there. You get to see the background of the players, and it's just, it's a great source of information for your Brahma's. If you haven't checked it out, please do. Face-off uh, will be into the Austin zone, the puck loose to the near side, and then wound up the center ice. The ice pass clear it right back in. Sumrick back after it for the promise. He is checked. Mad scramble back behind the Fort Worth goal, hustling it after it is Ryan Anderson. They try and work it for Larocque, but broken up on the far wing for Jason Clark. He clears, not out, stolen by Lardner. His shot caught by Cooper. The fortunate thing for Fort Worth, the ice bat shots are from long range, and Cooper is able to see the shot all the way through. That's a bad, that's a bad turnover for Fort Worth on the right side. Clark with a giveaway. It led to a shot from straightaway by Lardner, but there's Cooper on top of his crease. He's aggressive. He's square to the puck. His technique's really sound right now, and he's got a ton of confidence coming off the Goaltender of the Week award that Cooper won last week uh, for Fort Worth. He won four games, four and over. Overall. So he's got a lot of confidence back there. He's full of vim, 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 vigor, and energy, and he's playing like it early. He's a fifth-year pro, played junior hockey in the Ontario Hockey League with the Belleville Bulls. Here's the play now into the corner, into the Fort Worth zone. Ice bats in possession for the moment. Wooler trying to steal. Brahma's clear to the blue line, held in in the slot area. And the ice bats, big green law, centers in front of the goal, chance for the ice bats, Brown, check, cleared, not out, at the right point, a shot going wide. And the Brahm is uh, disorganized for the moment, and finally a good play by Culleton, just the uh, loops it, high fly ball into the Austin territory. Looks like a German bakery out there for the Brahmas, turnovers everywhere. Brahmas have five men back, they didn't even try an attempted to four check on that, They're playing more of a defensive style here against Austin. Here's the play now into the corner. Not one player in the Fort check on that last rush for Austin. Here's Talaire, tries to center one. Broken up with the Fort Worth defense. Davis packing at an ice bat forward. They fight for it ferociously to the side of the goal. Big Bobby. unit out for Austin now. STP, Sagan, Talaire, and Price. They're going to get all kinds of chances. Brahma's do a good job defending him. Here's Culleton moving in. Centers blocked off of the defense. And clearing it free is Brown at center. Left wing side, Talaire into the Fort Worth zone. Centers across off the stick, I believe, of Tilson up into the... A back behind the goal. Good play by Mike Tilson going down low. That's a dangerous two-on-one. Talaire leading the rush left side. Tried to throw it across to Sagan coming down the right side. And we'll take a look at it here on the replay. There's Cullerton trying to get back in the play. Tilson goes down, and it didn't hit a stick, Mike. He threw the big glove up there. It looked like Cooper and Ned. It went right off his glove, went high over the glass. That's why Mike Tilson's an all-star. Face-off will be to the right of the goal. Actually, believe it or not, Tilson 
is the uh, longest tenured Brahma, and he's only in his third year for Fort Worth. Yeah, he's uh, when you think Brahmas, you think Mike Tilson. Uh, if you can get past that ugly blonde hair, I think you're okay. Well, well I'll uh, let you tell him that personally then. <laughs> Here's no play problem. center ice, Gerald Tolaire able to clear it right back in. I think his wife likes it though, doesn't she? Yeah, I think she's kind of bored. All right, that's good. Know. Here's Tilson to the right wing side, tries to work it free on the near side for Sean Hughes. Hughes for Campbell, the former Tulsa Oiler. Left wing pass for Craig Johnson. Johnson moves hard and across that line into the corner. Johnson, center, stays on his feet, gets it to Campbell, drops it for Dan Villeneuve as the Brahmins maintain possession. Campbell tries to center one, loose now back of the goal. Peter Campbell does center one, the net dislodged this time into the Austin zone as the Brahmins with Campbell up front. Hughes and Johnson creating havoc in the Austin territory as the net dislodged into the Austin side of the ring. Okay. Okay, the score, no score here from the convention center, and we'll be right back with more. This is Fort Worth Brahmins Hockey. quite a bit tonight if you can especially on the two sides so you could get the huge enor you know, enormous feel of it in the history of the Brahmas franchise. They get the big orange ball, Jeff, and they're loving things here tonight. A family atmosphere, huge crowd tonight, and you can take a look from the wide view. There are tons of fans here this evening. Three-hour party tonight at the convention center. These guys are having a lot of fun. Let's hope the team in black gets her going a little bit. Here are the bats in their own zone. They clear it right back into the Fort Worth territory. This should be an icing call against Austin. Fork after icing is the infraction, and the faceoff will come all the way back deep into Austin territory. No score, 7.04 left in the opening period. You can take a look at the uh, the Fort Worth players bench, and if we can get a tight shot, there are Todd Lalonde, and there he is, Allie Davis, the only female trainer in the league, but Todd Lalonde, what a great job, former coach of the year in the Western Professional Hockey League. Yeah, Todd is he's one of the young coaches that uh, is probably the best in pro hockey, not in the National Hockey League. He's got great energy, he's an intense young man. He gets players to play with extreme confidence. Here's Willard, shoots, and the save made by McMullen. Willard in tight, but McMullen stood his ground and was able to get a piece of it and cleared to center. Great setup by Schumerick there for Willard, and Willard, he's been on a roll lately for the Brahmas. Five goals, four assists in his last five, and just missed on that one. Here's Bork, clears it right back in. Culleton in after it. Lardner checked by the Brahmas. Willard in a stoppage of play, and finally, a power play, believe it or not, Jeff, for the Brahmas. Yeah, Lardner's going to go for hooking, and that's what Chad Willard gives you. He's six foot two, 205 pounds. He plays with a bit of an uneven disposition. He wins a lot of battles along the wall. And right there, he just outmuscled Tab Lardner, forced Lardner to pull him down, and he earned the power play for the Brahmas. Great shift for Willard. Started out with a scoring chance, then he comes out and earns the penalty. And let's take a look at that uh, upcoming. Chad Woolard forcing the Austin player into the call. Yeah, you'll see. Actually, Woolard was able to step up and intercept the pass from the defenseman, and he's just a bigger man. He got in front of the Austin player. Positionally, he was in a better opportunity, and the ice pass player, Lardner, was forced to pull him down. Brahmas on the man advantage. Hooking at 13 23, Fort Worth in the power play, 46 for 253, 18%. Eighth in the league in that department. The Ice Bats, tenth in the league at an 80% clip on the penalty kill. And the Brahmas Culleton gains possession. Brahmas shut out last night. They were shut out 3 0 against the Bozier Shreveport Mudbucks. They've not scored a goal at home in uh, three periods plus. Here's the puck loose at center ice, and Greenlaw backhands it deep into the Fort Worth zone. And the uh, Ice Bats are turning it on the Brahmas. The Brahmas uh, succeeded just clearing it down. 
Yeah, penalty kill. These are two good hockey teams. They're two pretty good defensive hockey teams. They know how to play shorthanded. So it's going to be a matter of the Brahmas have to get in, set up, and then create scoring chances. There's not going to get a lot off the rush against this ice bat squad. Yeah, immediately, just like the Brahmas, the ice bats are clearing the zone immediately upon gaining possession in their own territory. Brahmas clear it right back in, and on defense, Daryl MacArthur, a youngster. He's a rookie in this league. Plays it free to the left wing side. Brahmas sent three men in and finally gained possession of the near corner. Back to the right wing point. Culleton shoots, deflected in front, nobody home. Rebound, Clark takes a whack, and Luke de Doo, it goes up into the crowd. The Brahmas uh, with some good puck possession in the offensive territory. And that might sting a little bit when that puck goes up into the crowd. And he doesn't seem too hurt on that. He'll come, a back. He'll come back. He's a hockey player, man. He'll yeah. score for a few stitches. He'll be All back right. out. No worries. Right. Looks easier, though, from here than when you're down there. It looks, oh, yeah, I'll just catch that puck. And then it stings a little bit. Oh, are, you kid are you kidding me? I'd probably be diving under the seat. Yeah, you would. <laughs> And there it is, the lucky uh, spectator here gets his souvenir. The Fort Worth Convention Center, and right off the bat, the uh, Ice Bats clear it deep into the Fort Worth zone. 40 seconds left in the man advantage. Justin Cargo leading the Brahmas in power play goals this year with nine. He's not in the lineup tonight, so someone's going to have to step up and fill that void for Fort Worth on the special teams. Brahmas in circle uh, deep on the left wing side. Fort Worth's forward now back of the net, trying to make a play, and that's Chad Wooler. Willard now angles back free to the left wing point for Van Volsen. Plays to the side of the goal. Van Volsen centers one. And what a Mother save gets by the piece by that. Hughes all alone, all alone down low. Great centering pass by Chad Willard. And Hughes, if he had a chance to do that again, he would have got it up. But Mo was able to slide over and make the pad save on Hughes. Here's a play at center ice. Brahma's trying to make a play. Stolen by Austin. And back the other way. Bobby Brown, a wrist shot. Cooper the save. Rebound. Cooper stops the second player. Ian Malak on the rebound. Bobby Brown had great speed coming up that left side. The first opportunity, Cooper did, get a did a good job coming out of the crease and cutting off Brown's angle. Just kind of swallowed that puck up, but it hit him right off the chest. We'll see it here on the replay. Brown with a hard slap shot right off Cooper's chest. The rebound went sat right in front of him. Both did a good job tying up Brown. LaRock got to it there on his back end. And Cooper, you'll see him kind of be big there. He was down on his on his back end, but he was able to raise his shoulders up and uh, swallow that rebound off of LaRock's stick. And uh, that's sweet for Corey Cooper. He and Ian Rock teammates a few years ago with the Waco Wizards. Here's Willers now in front. Shoots high over top of the goal. Break for Fort Worth. Greg Willers missed the target by a mile. Here's Dan Price back of the goal. Backhander. He also missed. Good breaks for the Brahmas. Two consecutive misses for the Austin Ice Bats. It does clear it down. It all comes off an offensive zone faceoff win for the Ice Bats. Dan Price is going to get his chances. The Brahmas going to have to do a good job containing him. He got far too much open space in the last opportunity. Brahmas again send three man off the forwards back to check. Here's Talaire. Centers in front. A chance for Price. He scores! What a setup. Price was all alone, unmolested in the slot. Talaire centers it and it's 1-0 Austin. Yeah, the play started at the blue line when Talaire was able to get around Dan Villa and then on his back end just a centering pass to Price. Price all alone between the circles. We'll check the replay out here. You'll see Talaire up the right side on his back end. Take the, you see him take a peek behind his shoulder. Centering pass. Chris Price all alone. And for Dan Price, he's second overall in the CHL in goals. And he just added his 41st of the season. And, uh, you know, you can't really fault Corey Cooper on that one. If you give Dan Price that many scoring chances, he's going to capitalize. You'll see Cooper go down early and Price really had a whole net to shoot at. Yeah, it's uh, no chance there again. All alone in front. He tried to stay with him, but he was able to get it into that uh, far side. one nothing. The assist on that goal for the Ice Bats. Gaffney and Talaire. Price is 41st of the year. 16-0-3 and a one nothing Boston lead. So uh, now the Ice Bats again trying to make a play. Quick shot by Brown off the backboards and wide. And then uh, finally the net dislodge with 3.39 to go in the first period. And the Ice Bats with a 1-0 lead. We'll come back with more from the Convention Center. Central Hockey League action. The Brahmas and the Austin Ice Bats 1-0 now in favor of Austin. Just one thing, they may want to change the score there. It says 0-0. Zero, zero. Okay. All right. And then, and then. Yeah, upcoming home games. One other thing here, too. Um, during the between periods, can we, are we going to go first to the taped interview to give us time? I think that would be better to give us to uh, give us. Well, actually, do you think we should come back to a scoring summary real quick, then go to the interview? All right, all right. And then we'll only. 
There's a reason why not. Okay. No, the reason that I didn't want to do that was because we have to hustle to get on camera. This gives us plenty of time to get on camera. Yes. Yeah. Because that gives us okay, seven keep, minutes yeah, cool. to... That'll work. Yeah. Okay. Brahmas trail the ice patch one nothing. Let's take a look at some of the upcoming games for the Fort Worth Brahmas as they conclude down the stretch here. We'll take a look in just a second. We'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, one nothing ice patch. Three thirty eight to go in the opening frame, and immediately it's clear to center ice. with a good start to this period. They killed off the ice bath power play for the last couple of minutes. They've kind of been on their heels. They've given Austin some good scoring chances and Price capitalized moments ago. The Brahmas need a good shift here to get momentum back. Here's a chance for Brown again. Cooper, the same. And it's like, like he's a stranger for shots on goal. Uh, nearly 1,800 this season in terms of the uh, shots against. Here's a play now in the slot. Greenlaw misses uh, for the moment. Clear right back to center ice. Culleton is too well tied up chance for the ice bats working free is tetro his shot is blocked and the brahmas control 255 left first period three-man break for fort worth if they hurry van volsen holds up at the blue line tries to work it free but he's poke checked at the last moment had he been able to elude that poke check he might have been able to get the uh, pass in front here's uh, davis now dumps it right back in the brahmas change on the fly You're, we're seeing the fort worth defenseman tilson davis trying to jump into the play and create a little bit of offense there we'll see that continue out th throughout the course of the hockey game other than that it's hustling back to play defense here's a play to the far corner now to the opposite side price who scored that lone goal and the free for brown the ice bats working it free in the slot. Maraca shot caught. Actually, Sagan, excuse me on that one with a wrist shot, and Cooper says no. Let's take a look at the upcoming games here for the Fort Worth Brahmas as Todd Lalonde a little miffed about all that. This Tuesday at the Convention Center, the Memphis River Kings, the leading team in the Northern Conference, and then next weekend, Jeff, the final two games of the year, the Ice Rays and the Austin Ice Bats to conclude the regular season. Tickets available at all Star Tickets and Albertsons, or at all Metroplex Albertsons. Location. Should be a great weekend for hockey here at the Fort Worth Convention Center. The 15th against Corpus is a must win for the Brahmas. The ice race, a little bit lower in the standings than they have been in years past. The Brahmas really need to pick up two points. And then next Saturday night, we'll do it again here against the Austin Ice Bats Fan Appreciation Night. So uh, get your tickets early for that one. Should be another good hockey game between these two hockey teams on display tonight. And then should the Brahmas hook into postseason play, they'll have a game at home either March 22nd or March 23rd against the Oklahoma City Blazers or the Memphis River Kings, but uh, they have to make the playoffs first. So obviously tonight's game, very important in their quest to gain postseason play. A delayed penalty coming up against Fort Worth. Ice bats clear it in as soon as Villana touches it. A stop, and now we have a scrap on the far boards. That's Eric LaBelle and a Fort Worth player hooked up along the far side. That's LaBelle and Johnson along the side there. Johnson's got the delayed penalty. LaBelle can't drop the glove. Now here we go. This is a good one. The linesmen are in between Johnson and LaBelle. Now Johnson comes with a hard right. That'll clear your sinuses, Eric LaBelle. The linesman, Brian Bull and Doug Whitty, staying between those two combatants. And uh, Mike, keep your eye on these guys. They might want to try to do it again a little later on. Yeah, the linesmen were able to get in there pretty quickly. It all started along the far boards. Johnson, the veteran, the captain of the Fort Worth Brahmas, LaBelle, the youngster, he's only 21 years of age from Hull, Quebec, taking on the longtime professional veteran at 30 years of age, Fred Johnson. And you see LaBelle as he's being let off the ice there. He's kind of motioning to Johnson. Hey, let's do it again in a, in, here in a few minutes. I don't think Eric LaBelle wants to do that. Craig Johnson, 6'4", 235. Even on his best days, when he's in the best moods, he's a little bit of a surly, he's, he's a little surly guy. But, but yeah. uh, you know, I think LaBelle's going to want to keep his nose clean of uh, Craig Johnson. But that would be a good show for the fans if the big captain got one going. Yep, uh, and the uh, Austin players looking on, they're sorting it out at the penalty box. Should be major penalties for fighting at 18.06. Johnson left the ice at the uh, with less than five minutes to go in this opening period. And there may be an extra penalty. It looked like an elbow call, so we may see an additional. I think the Brahmas were going to be penalized to start. Austin was going to have a power play anyway, 
and I think this will not only be matching major penalties, but we should have a, a power play opportunity for Austin, depending on how that the scrap starts to go on the far side. Well, Johnson got the initial minor behind the play. I believe it was an elbow up high on the bat's uh, defenseman there, but then LaBelle, uh, if Dwyer administers his penalty correctly, LaBelle should get an additional minor as an instigator, and, and if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, LaBelle's going to get an instigator, a major, and a game, should they rule that way, because the instigator carries an automatic right. game. We'll see if that cancels out the uh, the penalties, but uh, let's wait and see how Dwyer administers it. Jeff Greenlaw, again, a former NHL first-round draft pick by the Washington Capitals way back in 1986 with the young referee, Gordy Dwyer. These guys have a lot of experience, and some young referees in this league, they'll try and talk them into anything, yeah, but uh, we'll see what happens here. Greenlaw's been playing hockey since Christ wore moccasins, and Dwyer, is, uh, he's old enough, he can count the hairs on his face in one hand, so a uh, little bit of a uh, discrepancy in experience but uh, Dwyer seems pretty confident out there and uh, he handles Greenlaw, tells Greenlaw to beat it and, uh, and administers the situation. So there goes LaBelle too, so we'll again see what these penalties all are about here in just a moment. Looks like that instigation penalty because there's two minutes on the board for Austin. Yeah, they, they, gave, they gave Johnson the original minor, two for elbowing and a five for fighting. And as I suspected, LaBelle, two for instigation, five for fighting, the automatic game misconduct. So, uh, you, you know, you, you like LaBelle's heart and, and what, his, what his intentions are, but right there he needs to be a little bit smarter. If he wants to go after Johnson, wait and do it at a, at a better time, a more appropriate of time because he got the automatic uh, game misconduct for the instigator to even things up took his team off the power play. Brent Hughes, 35 years of age, an intense coach also. We talked about Todd Lalonde. This guy played in the NHL uh, for a long time. In fact, 12 seasons in the National Hockey League. Uh, 300, actually 357 NHL games, Boston, Buffalo, and the Islanders. And uh, he is an intense young man as well. Yeah, Hughes is a physical player. He, that's what he was known for during his pro hockey career was, was the rough stuff. He spent a little time in the, in the penalty box. And what his argument there is he doesn't want the instigator on LaBelle. He, just, he would prefer just to take the major and, the, and, and that's it, cancel it out. But uh, let's watch here how it, how it started. Behind the play, you'll see Johnson move up on the check. And I believe he leads high with his elbow. And uh, there's Johnson going way up high, and that's that's a justified penalty. Johnson went hard after Gaffney. That kind of touched off the whole thing, and then uh, LaBelle over to challenge Johnson, got the instigator. So a fortunate break for the Brahmas. They'll take that all night long. Here's the play now on the far side. Brahmas cleared, not out. The ice bats in an even strength situation. Shot from the right point, the flux wide. As Carriar let it fly, the Brahmas take over on left wing, and it's a two-line pass from inside the Fort Worth blue line to the Austin side of center ice with a minute and a half left in this period. Gerald Tolaire played for Todd Lillard with the Central Texas Stampede. Yeah, Gerald Tolaire for the Stampede a couple years back, 99-2000, and 94 points. That's a career high for Gerald. So Todd's very familiar with Tolaire's capability. He's got great speed, good hands, and you saw that early on with the first assist uh, by Tolaire. So the Bombers gonna have to control him. He's a big part of that STP line for uh, Austin. Believe it or not, hockey in Texas there was a team called the Central Texas Stampede in Belton, Colleen, and Temple, Jeff. Yeah, I know a little bit about them. Yeah, yes. we'll talk about that later. Trying to turn the page. <laughs> Here's the play along the near side. It just shows there has been uh, a lot of activity the last few years in addition to the Dallas Stars and the National Hockey League and teams sprinkling throughout the state. There's now a new team in our league in Laredo, believe it or not. The Laredo Bucks next season. Here's play now into the corner. Brahma's in this 1-0 uh, game with the Ice Bats leading late in period one. Kava swings it to the left wing side and the Ice Bats clear it right back into the Fort Worth territory. Cooper himself plays right side. Here comes Clark, dishing it off for Kava. Kava stays in the blue line, centers for Clark. He shoots, block of the defense. Tilson covers up. Clark now tries to jam it loose and the puck cleared into the corner. The net dislodged and Tilson having some work with an ice bat player. Villanov in there too. And the line's been trying to separate. And a lot of glove sandwiches there as Dan Villanov and Jason Clark in the middle of it into the uh, Austin territory. Yeah, this game's had a, a physical tone early on. Both teams not shying away from any contact. And Tilson getting into it behind the play with an ice bat player. Villano quick to get over and defend his teammate. Not that Mike Tilson needs it, but then Jason Clark going eyeball to eyeball with Perryard. And uh, we'll keep an eye on those two as the game pro progresses. Clark, no stranger to the rough stuff. All-time leading penalty minute getter in the East Coast Hockey League. 2,246 minutes in his ECHL career. This year he's leading the Brahmas with 301 penalty minutes. Probably going to pick up a couple, a couple more before the night's over. 
with no strangers as mentioned to the penalty box and more infractions right now as the ice pass players look on and uh, Jason Clark says what the heck's going on here I'm a little I'm a little fatigued from all that <laughs> yeah Clark's catching his breath Clark what he's doing there he's trying to give his team a spark Villanova trying to give his team some energy that's part of the, the physical element of the game the enthusiasm and energy that a player with Clark's aggressiveness brings to the team cannot be devalued at all. I mean, when he goes over there and he gets in Periard's face and he's staring him down and he's snarling and he's growling. I mean, me up here in the box, I'm flying all over the place. Imagine what it does for the guys in the, in, on the ice. Yeah, and what goes on here in the press box if you're snarling and all that too. But uh, man, I'll tell you what, it is uh, getting intense on the ice so far. And this is what it's all about. There is hockey here in Fort Worth, Texas. Fort Worth Promise games next weekend here at the convention center. And you want to see all this, you got to see it in person next weekend. Fan appreciation night next Saturday night against the same Austin team. There'll be penalties here against Tilson for Fort Worth and Greenlaw for the Ice Bats. Those were the two players originally involved in an altercation, so uh, henceforth they get the minor penalties. 1940 the time, so they'll finish out four on four, and this will go on into the next period as the Brahmas play to center. Chance for Van Volsen out of his reach. He he caught that pass, he would have had a clear-cut breakaway, and the ice bats controlled. 12 seconds to go in the frame. And across the line, Tetro centers across in front. The save by Cooper, rebound! Four seconds left, a dangerous scoring chance. Had that one gone in, the Brahmas would have been down by two, starting period number two. Four and four hockey, lots of open ice, and when you give a team with Austin's talent uh, that kind of space, they're gonna get some opportunities, and right there was Bobby Brown between the circles. Cooper struggled a little bit with that uh, that rebound. It went out between the circles. Fortunately, the net was knocked off the moorings behind him. There's Tetro coming on the left side. Good feathery drop pass back to Brown, and Brown, when he gets it, he knows what to do with it, and uh, he got it on net. Cooper made a save. That's 13 saves on 14 shots for Cooper. He's been good early for the Brahmas. Faceoff will be Wardner against uh, the Brahmas. Campbell, Brahmas win it. That's going to do it. The period has concluded. We're through 20 minutes here, and Jeff, pretty exciting here. The Brahmas, although outshot, some good scoring opportunities, and against this dangerous ice bat team, trail only one zip. Fort Worth has to be happy with the first 20 minutes of play. Obviously, Lalonde's not, not too excited to go in down a goal, but they came out early. They took the hockey game to the Austin Ice Bats, got some good scoring chances. Uh, McMullen was large for Ice Bats and Ned made some big saves. Austin kind of turned the tide, got the goal on uh, with, by Price, and uh, but Fort Worth came back strong. They had a few good shifts after, and uh, they got to feel good about themselves as they go to the dressing room. Okay, it's one nothing. Bats after one. We'll have more between periods including an interview with the Brahmas head coach, Todd Lalonde. one nothing Bats after one. You're watching Fort Worth Brahmas Hockey. everybody Fort Worth Brahmas hockey tonight the Fort Worth Brahmas and the Austin Ice Bats were between <laughs>
Welcome back, everybody. Fort Worth Brahmins Hockey. Tonight, the Fort Worth Brahmins and the Austin Ice Bats were between periods. The Fort Worth uh, Hockey Club and, again, uh, their rivals from right down south, those uh, Ice Bats. I'm Mike Barak, general manager of the Brahmins, also acting as play-by-play -play voice tonight. With me is the head coach of the Fort Worth Brahmins, the director of hockey operations, the man that makes it happen on the ice, Todd Lalonde. Todd, uh, congratulations. What a turnaround from a Fort Worth team that failed to make the playoffs in the last couple of years. Now the team's fighting for its playoffs. Uh, chances right here down the stretch. Yeah, we've, Mike, we've really played well of late. I think the team's uh, really come around not only on the ice, but I think off the ice and bought into a real simple system, uh, one that rewards hard work, one that rewards dedication. And we've proven the fact that, again, if we come in and outwork our opponent, we're going to win a lot more games than we lose. And the uh, Brahmas have played so competitive this year, uh, went through a six-game winning streak of late, and really gave yourself a little bit, bit of breathing room, but uh, not complete yet. No, it certainly isn't. We still need uh, two more wins over the next five games to guarantee ourselves a playoff spot. Uh, but more important than that, rather than schedule watch, we just want to make sure that our team plays sound, both technically and tactically. We're comfortable with our environment here at the Fort Worth Convention Center. We're comfortable with our team and our teammates. And uh, we're really looking forward to it. I mean, again, each night's uh, certainly an adventure in minor pro hockey. You, know, you never know exactly what you're going to get from the personnel in the locker room. But importantly, I think we're going in the right direction. Guys are upbeat. Their spirits are good. And again, we don't want to live and die in every loss, but it's important we bang off a couple wins here in a hurry. Well, for the Fort Worth uh, fans who have followed the situation Situation, hockey going back in the years. Big uh, action during this past off season, uh, an affiliation with the Dallas Stars. I know you're hoping to get Jeff Bateman back uh, here in the next week or so as the Brahmas try to clinch a playoff spot. Yeah, there's no question. I mean, Jeff Bateman's a great quality young prospect, not only for the Stars, but he's an immediate impact player for us at this level. And Bates, he's played probably 25 or 26 games for us and really been a key cog for us. And I know Dallas is excited with that. Obviously, young players that come into this environment that are counted on to not only produce offense, but also to produce defensively uh, is the environment that they want them in. And what's great for our program is he's come down here, he's contributed, and he's also made the adjustment at the American League level and has been able to play. So I think it bodes well not only for the Stars and selecting a player like Jeff Bateman, but also bodes well for the Brahmas that they've been able to develop one of their prospects to give him a legitimate opportunity to play. Todd, talk to us a little bit uh, for the fans watching for the first time Central Hockey League action tonight. What kind of brand of hockey? How would you describe it for the fans watching tonight? Well, I think it's fast, exciting, it's honest and it's really upfront. I mean, when you get to major league sports level, uh, contrary to whatever they're selling, it, you're really a dis you're distance from the sport. I mean, they're tough to get to hold of. They're, they're tough to touch. Um, it's a superstar game. The stars play. The stars are marketed. And I think when you come to a minor league hockey game, you're right on top of them. You get to touch the players. You get to see their faces, see their reactions. They live and die on every win and loss, every face off, every fight situation that may develop. And I don't just mean fisticuff fight, but every battle for a puck. And these kids really do want to go on. And they yearn to really make it to the big time, as the cliche goes. And you really see an honest, competitive hockey game each and every night. And I think that's what sells at the minor league level. I mean, these guys really do believe in their hearts that give it an opportunity they can play. And again, not always the best players play in the National Hockey League. So there's some pretty good players that compete in the Central League. You know, we talk about players advancing on to the National Hockey League and higher levels, but coaches do too. And Todd, uh, when the fans are watching Todd Lalonde behind the bench, my gosh, you give everything uh, to gaining a victory. Talk a little bit about the Todd Lalonde style behind the bench. Well, I've always been a big believer in the way I've been brought up. Is that as a leader, I think you've got to lead by example. And if you ask your players to lay it all on the line each and every night, I think as a coach, you've got to be prepared, again, both technically and tactically. Um, know exactly what you want of your players and how you want them to play. But above that, I think I'm just an emotional guy. I mean, I want our team to play emotional. I want us to expose ourselves each and every night and not leave anything left. It's tough when you lose a hockey game. You've just got a little bit of gas left. I don't think you've given your team the best opportunity. And sometimes I cross the line. I do some things I'm not particularly proud of after I do them, but it's all in the event of winning. I just want to make sure we give our team the best opportunity to win. I want our players to learn that there's nothing that supplements a quality work ethic. And if you work hard for a little bit longer than your opponent, you're going to win the hockey game. One final short question tonight. A short bench, fewer players. There's an opportunity for 18 players in the roster. You have uh, about 13 skaters tonight. Tell us about uh, your bench this evening. Well, you know what? It's nothing new. We've got 13 players, 13 skaters, two goaltenders, um, which is far below the normal average, but we've done it all year long. Again, if we're looking for reasons why we can't win the game,
game, we could probably find 100 of them. Uh, unfortunately, we've got a lot more reasons why we want to win, and we've done it all year long. Again, it allows our key players to really expose themselves to their opponent. And again, I'm looking for a tremendous effort tonight and a big win at home. Well, Todd, uh, congratulations on your great year. For the Brahma fans, uh, perhaps a playoff spot just around the corner. And uh, best of luck tonight and for the rest of the season to you. Thanks very much, Mike. I appreciate it. Todd Lalonde, head coach, director of hockey operations for the Fort Worth Brahmas. More Brahmas action in just a moment here at the Convention Center, the Fort Worth Brahmas and the Austin Ice Bats. Right the camera. Center we go. It's Fort Worth Brahmas hockey tonight. The Brahmas in the Austin Ice Bat. One nothing. Bats after one. Welcome back, everybody. Mike Farrick alongside Jeff Barman. Jeff, we're having a lot of fun up here. It's unfortunate for the Brahmas down one nothing, but we sure have a lot of excitement here tonight. Great crowd tonight. Great atmosphere in the Fort Worth Convention Center. And the Fort Worth Brahmas are really feeding off the energy of this crowd. They came out with a great start all over the ice pass. Got some good scoring chances early, but it was Austin that got on the board with the only first period goal, courtesy of Dan Price. And he's got a few this year. It was his 41st of the season. So the Brahmas down 1-0. They're going to need a strong second to get back in this one. Let's take a look at that scoring play in the opening period. Just one goal. Out of the zone, it came to Talaire's stick. It was a two-on-one for Talaire. He was able to work past Dylan on the goal line up the right side. Stumbled nearly lost the balance. Got his back in. Nice pass and pass to Price between the circles. He got Cooper to commit early and went across Cooper's body. And Dan Price, like I said, that's his 41st goal this season. He was second in the league. Scoring coming in. That's too easy for Dan Price. And the Brahmas would definitely want that one back. Then the Brahmas in the offensive zone had some scoring opportunities of their own. Just six shots on goal, and this is one of their chances. Yeah, you'll see down low was Cav on the left side. He was able to center through the crease. He was all alone on that right side. He didn't get it up like he wanted to, and then McMullen was able, able to make the pass save. Pass save. It all started. He shot from the point. Of course, the uh, Brahmas here in the uh, first period in this uh, scoring play down one nothing here at the uh, Fort Worth Convention Center. A lot of excitement as we talk about one of the largest, if not the largest. We'll find out as the night progresses. But uh, I'll tell you what, uh, the fans are getting their money's worth. A lot of entertainment on the ice and off the ice. There's all kind of things going on. We saw big orange balls floating through the convention center. We got the Hooters dance for your dinner. We got the Coors Light prize pack. It's a three-hour. I'm just happy to be here. I'm loving it just like the fans and the Brahmas. Look from their feet off the energy of this big crowd. Yeah, Fort Worth uh, right now in the uh, playoff hunt. A victory tonight could assure them pretty much of postseason play. A loss tonight. Man, it's going to be hairy down the stretch. They have things on the ice. The Chevrolet Scoro. You see the Albertson Zamboni. The uh, Mansfield Golf Blimp. Oh, my gosh. Uh, a little bit of everything here tonight. Yeah, we got a little YMCA. I'm surprised you're not turning around. Over there watching, she's waiting for you to do the YMCA. She wants to be here dancing, but no chance. Yep, you'll be the, yeah, you'll be. I'll the, dance. I am not shy at all. Don't worry about that. This is a great environment. You know, if you haven't been out to a Brahmas game, this is what you're missing. Come out, get to see some great hockey players on the ice, be a part of a fun family environment, and it's just a lot of fun. There's nothing else going on. I mean, come out here, hang out with us, have a great time, and watch some hockey. Next two games, next three games. This Tuesday and next Friday and Saturday night at the Convention Center, 7:05. next Saturday night, Fan Appreciation Night against the same Austin team. We'll have more from the Convention Center. one nothing Ice Bats after one. Hope you're enjoying it. This is Fort Worth Brahmas Hockey. Let's say that again. Youngsters in there. CS Radio Disney Youth Jerseys tonight. The families, the kids, affordable family entertainment right here in Tarrant County, and the fans are enjoying it here tonight. Well, it's great. Well, we're going to take a look at our
a Chevrolet scoring summary, and that's easy at the end of 20 minutes of play. It was just one goal scored, and the shots on goal, 14-6 ice bath. First, first period stats, Fort Worth with three of the first of their six shots in the first three minutes of the game. The ice bath able to weather that storm. McMullen made some big saves, and they turned the tide uh, as the period progressed. You see Cooper with 13 saves, McMullen with six saves, power play, Fort Worth killed off a two-man advantage for the ice bath for 22 seconds, unable to do anything with their only power play, but they had some good puck possession. Key stat there is face-offs, Fort Worth early winning all of them, Austin came back late, won 16 face-offs in that first period. That's where the tide started to turn, the uh, the, the face-off causes puck possession, which leads to scoring chances, and it was a rough first period for Austin, 21 minutes in penalties for the Fort Worth Brahmas, 15. Well, I, I expect the tendency to keep up there as far as rough stuff goes. And just one goal in this uh, opening frame it was uh, Price scoring his 41st of the year and that on a two-man break in front of the Fort Worth goal and that's the only goal here in period number one. Yeah Dan Price he had two or three chances in a row there Mike. Cooper made a couple big saves on him early but when Price was set up with Talaire between the circles he made Cooper commit early was able to go across his body no chance for Coop on that one but again the Brahmas gonna need to do a better job on Dan Price locking him down knowing where he's at in all areas of the ice. You can't give him time and space because he'll burn you, but uh, so look for the Brahmas to really contend with him over the over the course of the next 40 minutes. The Brahmas and the Ice Bats have had a lot of uh, fierce battles the last few years. This, nonetheless, uh, another battle here in Fort Worth. Let's take a look at the uh, upcoming games for the Fort Worth uh, Brahmas. And next Saturday night is the final game of the year. It's Fan Appreciation Night, also against the Ice Bats. There'll be uh, prizes galore, and I'm sure if. Uh, Anybody's watching the game tonight and see what's going on, be more of the same next Saturday, right here, 705 at the Fort Worth Convention Center. Tickets available at all Albertsons locations or by calling Star Tickets or by showing up next uh, Saturday night. We get a game Friday night here at the Convention Center as well. Yeah, it's gonna be a fun, it's gonna be a fun weekend. We got Corpus Friday, Austin Saturday. 60 minutes isn't gonna decide the battle between these two teams tonight, so we're gonna do it again next Saturday. Give away all kinds of prizes. Sponsors have chipped in, ton of great gifts, ton of giveaways for the fans. There should be a lot of fun, and if it's anything like tonight, uh, don't miss it. What should be great is the Brahmas conclude their 2001-2002 campaign. The score after 20 minutes of play. The Ice Bats won, the Brahmas nothing. We'll come back and take a look at the out-of-town scoreboard as well, the second period of play in just a moment. This is Brahmas Hockey. in the Austin Ice Bats. It is a 1-0 score in favor of Austin. Dan Price, the lone goal here tonight. Well, there's a lot of activity in the Central Hockey League. Our Radio Shack CHL out-of-town scoreboard. Tonight's CHL out-of-town scoreboard brought to you by Radio Shack. Radio Shack, you've got questions. We've got answers. The Tulsa Oilers, five points behind the Brahmas. Well, 1-1 one, one after one against the Amarillo Rattlers. I never thought I'd say this, but come on, Amarillo. <laughs> Tulsa and Amarillo deadlocked after one, and Amarillo's out of it right now. They're trying to play the role of spoiler tied at one with Tulsa in the first period. El Paso and Corpus Christi, the Ice Bay Rays out of it. El Paso trying to gain a playoff spot in the in the uh, West. We'll see. Yeah, that's the Billy Davidson game down there. He owns both teams, but uh, El Paso right now fourth overall. They've won a couple in a row to move up in that uh, Southern, Southern Conference playoff standings, and uh, that's a big game for both hockey teams. The San San Antonio Iguanas. People said hockey in San Antonio and Lubbock, Lubbock, Texas, the home of Bobby Knight. The Cotton Kings trail the Iguanas 1-0 after one. The Memphis River Kings, they're the leaders in the north. And those other pesky guys from Oklahoma City, the Blazers and the River Kings. And then in Odessa, the Jackalopes have been great this year, 1-0 after one. Odessa's won 10 in a row before losing to last, Austin last night. They're trying to get back in the winning track here this evening against San Angelo. Okay, here we go. Second period. Brahmas trail by one. A quick snap over top of the goal. And the Brahmas trying to work it out of their own zone. One nothing bats after one. Early in the second period, just in a way. Will it shoot? Shoulder save McMullen. Big rebound as the Ice Bats gain possession back to the goal. So the uh, Brahmas starting off strong in the second period. Willard 
fiercely in a four check. Brahmins have not scored in four periods. Four on four hockey, lots of open ice here. Uh, Lice bats are dangerous with this, with this uh, space here, with their speed, but Brahmins answering back early with some good chances. Willard's a man possessed tonight. He's playing unbelievable. Here's a centering pass, and Price is denied. Brahmins break two men to center. Willard and the forward Van Bolsen, who was tripped down, no call. Todd the line and the Brahmins feeling that Van Bolsen was tripped up on the play and there should have been a power play. Yeah, that's a tough break for the Brahmas. Van Bolsen pulled down from behind. I believe it was Sagan that took down Van Bolsen just as Van Bolsen gained the offensive zone for the Brahmas. But it all started with a great save by Corey Cooper back there for Fort Worth. Price was all alone on the doorstep. Cooper, good save by him. Triggered the break, handed it up to Woolard. Woolard skated the length of the ice. He tried, had Van Bolsen trying to join him on the two-on-one. But after Van Bolsen was pulled down, Woolard uh, forced to shoot there. He shot high. But uh, this four-on-four, four, Mike, can't sit down here. It's exciting as uh, Tilson and Greenlaw remain in the box respectively for each team. Brom is in their black uniforms uh, here in the second half of the season. In the dark uniforms, Bobby Brown works against Sumerk for Fort Worth. He's a backliner. It's worked into the corner. They try and jam it free to the left wing point. Ice pass, work it free. Tiller shoots, kick save by Cooper. At the right point it goes. Perriard shoots, caught by Cooper. It may be going wide, but uh, Corey elects to take the safe play anyway, and then a glove sandwich from Sumerk to an Austin player. Don't tell me, Jeff, he's going to get called for that with a love tap. <laughs> yeah, David no Sumer, way. Uh, unhappy with something uh, in front of the there. Uh, a oh, that was a push, Jeff. Uh, they had an initial slashing call coming up on Sumerk, and then after the whistle, okay. after Brown went back at Sumerk, Sumerk uh, gave Brown a couple of, uh, basically a straight arm right to the face of Bobby Brown, knocked him on his derriere. That earned him I believe an additional penalty as Dwyer made the penalty call a uh, motion for unsportsmanlike. Uh, so we'll see what the call is specifically on uh, David Sumer. But nonetheless, looks like the Bombers are going to be shorthanded here uh, early on in this second period. David Sumerick is a 21 year old from Orillo, Ontario, a rookie out of uh, North Bay and Sudbury of the Ontario Hockey League. And if this is the case, they have two minutes on the board for Sumerick. And it will be a power play for the ice bats on a four on three. That extremely rare four on three power play coming up here is uh, Schumer got the only minor of that altercation. And now the Brahm is down 1 0. They're short handed early on in the second period. This is a big kill for Fort Worth. Fortunately for the Brahm, Corey Cooper's been great in net. He's seeing the park all the way. He's confident on top of the crease. Your goaltender has to be your best penalty killer. And now uh, we'll see if Coop can rise to the occasion for the Brahm. Okay, so a power play is mentioned for the Ice Bats, four on three. They've not yet announced it, but as mentioned, the Browns are down just that one two-minute uh, time on the clock. It's slashing, it appears. And again, at 1.10 in period number two. So the Browns will rely on the man, Corey Cooper, in this uh, disadvantage for Fort Worth. Yeah, number one power play in the Central Hockey League, the Austin Ice Bats going back on the man advantage as Sumer gets called for the slashing penalty. He's going to get an extra minor for unsportsmanlike. We'll see uh, what the official call is. Still starting to straight it out here in the press box, but uh, but uh, nonetheless, too much in the box for the Brahmas. And now, the three penalty killers out there for Fort Worth, Cava, Clark, and Villano. Uh, the impetus falls on their shoulders to kill this penalty off for the Brahmas. Todd Alon in disbelief over the call. Nonetheless, a power play for the Ice Bats and a tough situation for Fort Worth. Here we go, Brahma's clear to the point outside the blue line and a break for Fort Worth and Tetro gains possession. And it's Tetro now at the right point between the blue lines, shoots it wide. The other two players are back on. It's now a five on four power play for a minute 40. And the Brahmas down one nothing in this game. Here's Tetro at the point. Plays it free on the opposite wing as the ice bats wheel and deal. Chance for Brown to place deflected Cooper says no. Big Dan Price stationed like a rock in front of the goal, causing some havoc. Although Mike Tilson and Jason Clark and Dan Villanova are in the vicinity, they still were able to get the shot on goal. Yeah, it was a shot from the point by Brown for Austin. He just kind of spin at the top of the circle, waited for Price to set his screen, and he fired. Cooper was able to move over and see around Dan Price, and good job by Mike Tilson to keep Price out of the way. There's Bobby Brown. He's got a hot, hard, heavy shot. He kept it low to the ice. Good save by Cooper, and better work by Tilson to keep Price from moving. Here we go, a shorthand a chance for the Brahmas coming the other way. Here's Van Bolsen poke check at the last one, but he tried to sidestep the defenseman, Tetro, who gained possession at the last moment. one nothing ice bats. Austin on the power, spank it right back into the Fort Worth zone. Zone, Talaire on the far board, Sagan. 
Tied for the lead in scoring in the Central Hockey League. Sagan circling. Andy Creel on the far side. Austin Whelan deal with the man advantage. Here's Brown on the far side to Talaire. Back to Brown at the left point. Fakes his shot. Lost possession for the moment, but fortunately for him, he still gains possession. Shoots one through traffic, and Cooper says no. He was able to finally catch it after it somehow went through a maze of traffic. Bobby Brown, a one-man power play for the Ice Bats on that left point. And all he's doing is waiting. He's buying time. He's, he's kind of backing off. He's waiting for Dan Price to set up in front and create a screen opportunity for his shot on goal. And there's Price shot from the, shot from the left side. And Bork pushing Price out of the way, allowed Cooper to see that puck. Good work by Bork in front against Dan Price. And that's what I talked about during the intermission. The Bombers need to keep a body on Price and know where he is at all times. Big soft will be deep into the forward zone. Brahma's still man short for 50 seconds. This is the fourth power play of the night for Austin. The Brahma's clear. So far, the Brahma's have held the Austin Ice Bats off the scoreboard with the man advantage. Here's the play at center ice. The Ice Bats take control. Gaffney at uh, center is checked. Now it clears it right back into the forward zone. LaRock able to spin it behind the forward goal. Greenlawn after it. Played now to center ice and Culleton picks it opening and clears it down. One thing to keep your eye on, Wooler just went to the bench for the Brahmas in a great deal of pain. And uh, Allie Davis over to attend to him right away. We'll see if Wooler can come back. Didn't see what happened to him, but I know he's hurting over there. Brahmas had some key scratches tonight. One to Justin Cardwell out with a concussion. Cody Liable with a kidney injury and also for Fort Worth. Jeff Bateman remains on recall to the Dallas Stars of the National Hockey League. Expected to return to Fort Worth next week. Here's a clearing shot into the forward zone. Cooper himself plays outside the blue line to Campbell. A break into the Austin zone. He's in, he shoots high over top of the net. What a brilliant setup from Corey Cooper. What a great pass from this uh, Fort Worth goaltender. Yeah, Cooper said, boys, let me give you a little help getting on the scoreboard. He sprung uh, Campbell up that left side, and Campbell just missed it high, high glove side. Another opportunity to score for they tried to go high on Brian McCullen. And Corey Cooper created the offensive opportunity there for the Brahmas. It was a great scoring chance for Fort Worth. The uh, Brahmas have yet to solve this 21, this 24-year-old from East Amherst, New York. And it was Corey Cooper to Campbell breaking down the left wing side. Yeah, Campbell's got a huge shot all alone top of the circle. He, he labeled it up high, high to love. Unfortunately, just missed over that far corner. I'll tell you what, the fans will explode tonight if the Brahmas score. They've not scored. For a couple of games, they did not score last night in their 3-0 loss to this uh, Bozier Shreveport Mudbuck. Here's played at center ice, Austin clear it in. That's it, the Brahmas killed off that penalty. Teams at even strength. The Brahmas penalty killing has been perfect tonight. Here's a centering pass, Brahmas in the slot. Work out of there. Lead pass to the advancing player at center ice, Van Volsen. Saucers a pass to the left wing side. And Tilson just muscles it behind the ice pass cage. It's the player, Brown. Winds it not out. Tilson holds it in. Shoots through traffic. Slapped away. The left wing side of the bat clears the center. Tilson shot from the point, and Clark looked like he redirected that one, but uh, McMullen able to fight it off, fend off the play, and uh, make the save. Okay, 1 0. Ice pass after 4 13 into the second period. We'll take a break. You're watching Fort Worth Brahma's Hockey. Everything for everybody. The cheerleaders enjoying it. One nothing bats. Hey, Bama fans, for a limited time only, you can receive two free $13 Bama tickets, $26 value, 
from Diamond Shamrock with the purchase of two Coca-Cola products, 20 ounce Coca-Cola products. See participating Metroplex locations or log on to Brahmas.com for details. Diamond Shamrock, keeping you on the go. Those tickets will be good for next weekend. The Brahmas and the Austin Ice Bats and the Corpus Christi Ice Rays, 15th and 16th. And also Tuesday night, the Brahmas and the River Kings here at the Convention Center. Three home games next week for Fort Worth. It starts on Tuesday night against the Northern Conference leading Memphis River Kings. And the Brahmas have had success against Memphis this year. Should be a good hockey game. Next weekend, back-to-back -back home games Friday and Saturday to close out the home portion of the Brahmas schedule. First Corpus in town, and then Austin is going to come dance again with the Brahmas. There should be some exciting hockey next weekend coming up here at the Fort Worth Convention Center. Well, we have exciting hockey tonight. Uh, the Brahmas have yet to score a goal. But it's just a one nothing game, anybody's hockey game early on. Here's play at center ice, and Culleton snaps it right back in, actually up over the uh, runway area, into the curtain back of the goal. It's a horseshoe arena here. They have the curtain, and Culleton let it fly, and what an addition for Todd Lalon. As you see the end zone, it's a horseshoe, an 11,000-seat uh, building here tonight, Jeff. And this building built in the late 60s, early 70s, and they've had hockey going on here from that time. Really a sparkling facility, the, the centerpiece of the downtown area in Fort Worth. Great entertainment option for the downtown uh, patrons. And uh, just come down, have dinner, go, go have a drink, then come over and enjoy some hockey. It's a great setup here in, in Fort Worth for pro hockey. And of course, after the game with the uh, Bass Brothers and all the activities downtown for post-game activities as well. Here's a centering pass and deflected away as the player uh, Periar was in deep for Austin. Plays now back of the goal. They try and work it for Gerald Tiller as they fight for it along the board. one nothing bats. Tiller centers beautifully intercepted by Tilson. Two outlets for Campbell, who's too well checked by Tiller. And the bats control at their own defense and work it outside the blue line. The best players for Austin, Tiller and Price, playing a bit for the ice bats. There's Tiller again with a centering pass. Shot fortunately went wide. And the Brahmas control back of the net. 14-45, left second period. A lead pass on right wing from Tilson. Has Colton on the move. In across the line, feeds it for Hughes. It bounces off his stick. But Hughes still gains possession for the moment, taken out of the play. And the ice pass on the left wing side. MacArthur breaks out of there. one nothing Austin. 14 and a half minutes left in the second period. And they clear it in. So a lot of dumping and chasing gap on both sides of the ice. Yeah, Fort Worth, as we said, with just 12 skaters now, Woolard uh, injured for the Brahmas. They're going to play a lot of double chase, play a lot of defense uh, over the course of this hockey game. Try to be opportunistic offensively. Yeah, we've not seen Woolard back. He was uh, shaken up here early in this period. We'll get, see what happens as the night progresses on that situation. And the puck bounces all the way to center. Again, the Fort Worth short in numbers anyway. And the Brahmas can ill afford an injury at this particular point of the season as they are trying to clinch a playoff spot. Here's Culleton able to get a piece of it deep into the Austin zone. A foot race for it. Van Bolson does not win the battle against the Austin player, Mike Gaffney. That's icing on the play. The faceoff will come all the way back. Gaffney, a young defenseman on the back line for the Austin Ice Bat, 25 years of age from Worcester, Massachusetts. Two years ago, played for the Ice Bats out of the University of Massachusetts Amherst. A lot of these players for the Ice Bats hail from the Western Hockey League. There is a from just outside Boston, Mass. Yeah, there's, there's one American down here for the Austin Ice Bats. <laughs> Mike, you kind of caught me off guard on that one. You did your homework. I did. I don't know who the uh, American is, but uh, it's predominantly ca Canadian culture here in the Central Hockey League, but it's good to see the guys from the, from the uh, Red Wing Blue step up. Yeah, UMass Amherst uh, here playing at the Fort Worth Convention Center. Who would have thunk? There's play at center ice, and the play now at the defense. It's cleared right back to center. And the Brahmas wind it right back into Austin territory. Bats take over, and icing is the call, and the faceoff will come all the way back. 13-23 left in the middle period, and the Fort Worth Brahmas yet to score a goal. They're down one nothing. On the other hand, they've uh, taken an Austin team with 214 goals in 2001-2002 and yielded only one. So I guess that's the good news. The bad news is you have this huge crowd tonight. They have yet to jump on their feet for a scoring play for Fort Worth. Yeah, it's kind of like a, a pending eruption here from the Brahmas fans as they're they kind of forced to sit on their hands and wait for the Brahmas to put one in the back of the net. They're just not getting a lot of shots on goal right now. Nearly halfway through the game, they've just got nine shots on McMullen. And I was talking with TL earlier before the hockey game. He said they got to pepper McMullen. They got to get the puck to the net because he'll give up the fat rebound. Unfortunately, Fort Worth unable to get anything close on McMullen here, specifically in the second period. Here's the puck into the corner. Bats trying to work it free in front, but Jason Clark on the right wing side gains possession, flings it free for a streaking Willard, so he's back. 
So I guess he's okay here, Jeff. Yeah, he's a he tough kid. Up. Here's Van, Van Volsen for Fort Worth, the Brahma's leading scorer. To the point for Fort Van Volsen shoots one, just deflected over top and over that curtain area with a total of uh, 13 minutes to go in the second period. The Brahma's this time were able to pop over McMullen. I don't think he saw that shot, but fortunately for him, it went over the glass and into the uh, runway area. Well, what happened, Mike, is the dump in by the Brahma's. McMullen came out to play the box, and he didn't play it as well as he would have liked. It took a strange hop off that far boards, and the Brahma's were able to hold it in and get his scoring opportunity. That's what you want to do with McMullen. Make him play the puck, make him stop the puck, and he'll, his reputation, he'll cough it up, he'll give you some scoring chances. That's what, that's what happened there for the Brahma's. I'll tell you what, McMullen likes the Brahma's. He's 5-0 with a 1.99 goals against average against Fort Worth, so he has enjoyed Fort Worth so far this season. Here's play at the point. Tilson lost it, a foot race at the blue line, but Cooper alertly plays to center. He's got to hustle back, however, and finally it's clear right back in. Cooper with some great skating ability. They rule it a delayed offside, but Cooper fortunately won that battle. Otherwise, there would have been a clear-cut breakaway against the Fort Worth netliner. Yeah, Cooper there, like I said, That's Cooper bailed himself on on that one. Big play by Corey. Corey Cooper facing 1,868 shots so far this season. Nearly 2,000, an average of 30 per game in this season. Faced 18 so far tonight and stopped 17 of those Austin opportunities. Here's playing to the Austin zone. one nothing. We're almost halfway through into this hockey game, and the Brahmins have yet to tally a goal. Here's the defenseman on the near side on the corner area, Tetro, and the puck deflects up into the crowd. The face-off this time deep in Austin territory, and the Brahmins looking for scoring play. Lots of families and kids tonight as they're enjoying the action, but also looking for a puck at Brahmins' goal. Looks like Lalonde has, has gotten the message to his team to step it up physically and uh, uh, capitalize on the dump-in chase by causing turnovers down low, the bombs to the circles. Right there, that last shift, you saw Cava throw a hit, you saw Campbell throw a hit, you saw Hughes throw a hit. So the Brahmins' forwards are really picking up their forecheck uh, more aggressively here in the second period. Jeff, hopefully tonight we'll take a look at some of the chalkboard activities that Todd Lalon uses on the glass. You could actually see some of his little uh, plays actually on the glass. We'll get to that in just a bit as they clear it right back in, putting a little pressure on Dave Ernst, our producer and director here tonight, to take a look at the close-up of that. Here's the play on the far side. Ice pass, fling it to center ice in this 1-0 game with Austin leading and the Brahma's control. Here's uh, Campbell. Deep pass ahead for Hughes, blocked away. And it's high stick, I thought, and the ice bats clear at the center. Lead pass, but Johnson breaks it up. It's deflected into the far corner, and Cooper, who's had a roam a lot, winds it himself on left wing. Brahma is trailing by one, feed it up the middle. Here comes Campbell, the former Tulsa Oiler, for Sean Hughes. In for a streaking Davis, but falling on top is McMullen. He holds on. 11.32, left second period, one nothing bats. It's an up and tuck affair from the convention center. You're watching Brahma's Hockey. periods. We'll tell them between periods. Okay. Mike Barak and Jeff Bowerman. Now that looks like hieroglyphics to me, Jeff, but those are actually hockey plays designed on the glass. That is the hockey coach galore. Yeah, that's uh, right out of Punch M. Lock Toe Blake uh, School of uh, Hockey I Education. Can't read that, you? Uh, well, I'm going to pretend like I can. Okay, I've been with right. him four years. If I don't know, nobody knows. But uh, Lalonde's always coaching back there. He's an aggressive, in your face style of coach. He gets the most out of his players. And it's good to see him back there working. At least Stewart knows he's paying him for something. Stuart Frazier, the majority owner of the Brahmas, and of course the minority owner, former NHL goaltender Andy Moog, who's currently a goaltending consultant for the Vancouver Canucks. Here's playing to the corner, and the ice bats control. 11.20 to go in the period. The fans it, it just itching for a goal for Fort Worth, and the ice bats control. one nothing. We have ourselves a tight tight one here tonight as Fort Worth clear at the center and right back in. It uh, trickles on edge, and 
Patted down at the ice bath blue line. And you see the Brahmas kind of set up their little mini trap through neutral ice, just waiting for their opportunity to pounce on a loose puck and move in on the ice. And when Jeff says mini trap, they're not sending any players in a forecheck. They're all lined up at center ice or back. Here's play at center ice. Now Willard, drop pass in uh, Chad Willard into the corner. Holding on to the puck, surveys the traffic, tries to center one, cleared by the ice pads. They have no other choice but to ice it. Craig Johnson back at it. The ice baths were changing, so an easy icing call. And the faceoff will come all the way back. 10.38 left in the middle period. 1-0. Craig Johnson, the captain, a 10-year professional, played also with the Central Texas Stampede, the Oklahoma City Blazers in the Central Hockey League, and, of course, Central Texas in the WPHL. And Todd Alod loves his fierce nature on and off the ice. Yeah, Craig's a big dog. He just kind of leads the little puppies around, and that's his job on the ice is to set the tone, set the example for the for the team. He does a great job in the locker room, and he's played a spirited game tonight, flipping from uh, forward and defense, uh, going both ways. Here's Price now, and across the line, holds up at the blue line, tries to make a play, Chad Willard. Oh, he bear hugged the Austin player, and he's gonna get a penalty, I think, holding on the play, although, I don't know. What do you think, Jeff? Well, I think right there, that's another case of Dan Price creating the opportunity for the bats. It's, as he came down that left side, we're gonna take a look here on the replay, and uh, yeah, you, you kinda gotta call that one. I guess uh, Willard wrestled round up, wasn't gonna give him an opportunity to get a stick on uh, that centering pass from Dan Price. Sorry, that was Gerald Tolaire for the ice bats. But you see how Price, Price, we didn't catch it in the replay, but when he comes through neutral ice, he's got such great speed. He puts the defenseman on your heels, and Brown, no, Tolaire, Brown, whoever's out there, they know to go to the net, and Price is gonna get it to him. Price really forced that penalty on Woolard, so now the Brahma's shorthanded again. They, they're three for three on the kill so far tonight. They need a fourth one. To, they cannot afford to go down 2-0 here in this hockey game. Here's playback of the goal Tetro has for the Ice Bats on this power play. Brahmas have killed off all of the penalties so far across the line. Here's a centering pass from Brown in front. Shot over top of the goal. The Ice Bats have actually missed three or four chances in front. Tetro back to the point. A chance for the Ice Bats blocked off by Clark. It's cleared behind the net. And Brown and Price again. Here's Bobby Brown with Price to his left, the drop pass, nobody home and cleared by Fort Worth outside the blue line and all the way down. Great play by Dan Villano in the corners. He was able to fight off the ice fat player and clear, clear, clear the zone all by himself. Here's Tetro, lead pass from the up wing side to Lair. Dances to center ice, flip pass right wing side for Brown. A minute to go in the penalty. Brown trying to clear it free. They succeed and clear outside the blue line. It was Harry there for a moment and the ice bats take over, Brown. Covers up, leads for Price, drop pass in front of the goal, Sagan shoots, he scores! Sagan let it fly, Cooper got a piece, it trickled slowly over the goal crease, 2 nothing bats, a power play goal. And the Brahmas, really, that play started, neutralized Fort Worth, he got the clear, but they weren't able to get it deep, and Austin just kind of reloaded, regrouped, and came back the other way, again it was Price, Price dropped to Sagan, Sagan waited, looked for a pass, and a shot, and it caught Cooper's, the bottom of his arm, and then went fivefold, just a heavy shot by Sagan. Again, but that's a case where you give Brett Sagan so much space. He scored a few goals in his pro career. Third leading scorer last year in the WPHL, and uh, he knows what to do with it when he gets that kind of space. So now the Brahmas in a little bit of a hole, 2-0, uh, over halfway through this hockey game. Well, they're going to get the assists on that play. It is Smart and also Brown. Sagan's 24th of the year, his ninth power play goal at 10:43. The Ice Bats uh, are able to increase their lead. So that's a deflating goal for the Brahmas, who have played well tonight. And they now may have to open it up a little bit, down by two halfway through this game. They played solid defensively, but now again, they're gonna have to open it up. Here's Davis, winds it right back in. Bats played along the board to the near side. Brahmas Kava trying to play it free. The Brahmas have won just one game this season against the Bats. And Austin trying to play it free on the left wing side. They clear it into center ice, and Kava drops it free. What that second goal does for Fort Worth is it forces them to change their strategy a little bit. They can't sit back and neutralize and try to trap uh, all game long. Now, now they got to go for a little bit of offense. Looks like they're going to get a chance with a power play coming up here as the Perriard is going to get whistled for the infraction. And uh, he could have got called earlier in that shift. He came came up really high on Adam Davis with his stick. Lucky no high stick was called. But let's take a look at the replay here. We see Kava coming down the right side. He's able to get, gain position on Perriard. Force Perriard to give him the stick and pull him down. And uh, that should be a hook on Dominic Perriard. And now Kava's going to the box for Fort Worth. They could call an unsportsmanlike dive on Kava. So it could be coincidental, Miners, and that is going to be a tough break for Fort Worth. 
if that is indeed the case. Looks like it is. Four on four. Dwyer well, motions to the benches, and uh, that's not going to make the Brahma's bench too happy. And now Dwyer's going to skate over and have a word. It's not with really the Fort Worth bench. And obviously, we're uh, biased uh, uh, bystanders, but nonetheless, I'll tell you what. In a game like this, you got 9,500 fans. It's a 2 nothing game. Uh, it was clearly going to be a power play for Fort Worth, and sure, there's going to be discussions, but the referees got to fold off in the unsportsmanlike conduct penalties in a game like this. Nevertheless, it's going to be even strength. 11.32 time, and it's going to be a four-on-four. Four. Second situation, a four-on-four four here in this hockey game, and uh, maybe the open ice will be what the Brahmins need to get more spark offensively. We'll see if Van Bolsen, Willard, uh, Tilson, and Johnson can do a little damage out here for the Blackshirts. You know, we've joked that for Fort Worth, these guys are getting a lot of ice time. Some teams, they don't get enough in Fort Worth. These guys get plenty of the opportunities to play an even strength situation, power plays, penalty kill, a lot of ice time for Willard and Van Volsen. Here's play at center ice, Willard, or Van Volsen, I should say, leaves it for Tilson, ahead on left wing for Van Volsen, and he slams it in. Eight minutes to go, second period. Even strength, four on four. The ice bats have scored a power play goal and an even strength tally. And Sagan, in across the line. Slug shot, Cooper says no, he holds on. It was in the breadbasket area, and he elects to hold on rather than yield a rebound opportunity in the Fort Worth goal crease area. And this is a good one-on-one -on -one opportunity for Austin. Yeah, good chance for the ice bats coming up that left side. That was, uh, I believe it was Bobby Brown on that far side uh, for the ice bats that got the shot on goal. The Brahmas doing a good job of staying out of Cooper's way and letting him see the shots. When Cooper sees it, he usually makes the save, and uh, Coop keeps it at a 2-0 margin for the ice bats. Fort Worth Brahmas down by a pair and the puck loose back of the goal and it is Adam Davis in this four on four. Davis uh, for Fort Worth with Culleton. There to the point, a shot right on and blocked for the defense. The ice bats letting go go MacArthur at the right point. Brahma is lob it to center ice and a break for uh, Peter Campbell. Campbell now back of the goal. Skated off, Bork after it in deep for Fort Worth in a four check. A defenseman in tight, he takes a hit. Down to the ice as well. Brahma's trying to make a play. Borkle on the boards is too well tied up. And now, stripped to the puck is Bork and uh, MacArthur back the other way. Singan, left wing side pass across. He's in, he shoots high over top of the net. Nobody home. And in fact, it went over the glass into the crowd with 7.06 left in the second period. And the ice pass with a 2-0 lead over the Fort Worth Brahmas. Great for Fort Worth there. Sagan, Sagan shot went uh, high and over the, over the glass. That faceoff's going to come out uh, to neutral ice. Taking it back here a moment ago, the Brahma's in deep. That's Bork down low. He took a big hit from MacArthur, but give David a little bit of credit. He stayed with it, covered the puck, able to, was able to move it along down low there to his teammate Peter Campbell. That's what the Brahma's need to do, keep the puck in deep, and then look to capitalize on puck, with puck possession down low. Brahma's up front. Clark for the Brahmas and Van Volsen on defense, Tilson and Johnson. And Fort Worth on the attack, trailing by a pair. Up to center ice it goes, and Van Volsen slides it for Clark down the right wing side. Clark in. Slap shot blocked for the defense, but he can't, uh, maintains possession. Clark, a dipsy doodle move, he shoots. Blocked by McMullen, he got a blocker on that. Tilson centers back to the point. Johnson beautifully holds it in. Bangs it behind the net for Clark. Van Volsen in deep for Clark behind the goal. He's tripped up, no call. He maintains possession. Clark cuts in front. A shot right on! McMullen the save, he lost his skull stick. And finally, he grabs his piece of lumber, and then Tilson has a word with an Austin player. Jason Clark performing some magic. He just couldn't put the puck in the net. Yeah, Clark's known for uh, for using his hands, other things, other than scoring chances. But a great move for Clark. He was able to walk around the goal, and he, it was at a bad angle. We're going to take a second look at this. As Clark fought off the Austin defenseman, got up, surveyed his territory, and moved around the, moved around the net. He had it on his forehand. McMullen, he was out of position, but he still had the angle on Clark, and he just swallowed up that side of the net. And uh, I know Jason's frustrated there, but that's the best shift for the Brahma so far in this second period. A lot of a lot of uh, good effort out there by Craig Johnson and Jason Clark, Clark specifically. We'll see if that can give him some momentum. Just a second to go in those matching penalties. Now it'll be five on five. Brahmas win it. Johnson shoots. It was a knuckler. Rebound. McMullen gets a skate on that. Johnson let go a uh, uh, shot that kind of was a knuckleball and then got his own rebound. Couldn't put it home. Brahmas kick uh, possession on the left wing side. Tilson on the bouncing puck. Holds on. Tries to center one. Lines it for Culleton behind the net. Snaps it behind the net. Willard in after it. 
able to uh, gain a, an opportunity for Fort Worth behind the net, Colleton. Brent Colleton for the Brahmas, his first action with the Fort Worth hockey team this season. Colleton behind the net for Van Volsen. To Wooler, back behind the net, Van Volsen centers, but nobody home. The Ice Bats did a good job of keeping the, uh, the uh, Brahmas on the perimeter. Good shift though for Fort Worth, puck possession. That's gonna add up to scoring chances later on as we get further, further along in this hockey game. Here's Tilson now for Fort Worth. Bobs it past the center ice, broken up at the blue line in Austin control. We have ourselves a two to nothing. Austin lead, puck loose at center. Brahma's steal for the moment. Willard couldn't get it past the defense. And then in left wing it goes for the forward Price in. Tries to get a shot off. Cooper is down. It is uh, Brown. Back to the point it goes. Chance for Tetro. Escape save by Cooper. The ice pad's buzzing now. This is their big line. Forward trying to jam it loose. Cooper falls on top. And man alive, all Austin here late in period two. The Brown is trying to hang in there. It's two to nothing late in period two on Fort Worth Promise Hockey. Okay. And everything, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Bruiser, the Brahma's friendly purple bull mascot. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. How can a bull be friendly? A purple bull, nonetheless. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we'll talk about that later. You, you caught it, correct. Anyway, uh, Radio Shack is proud to sponsor the Fort Worth Brahma's tonight's game presented by Radio Shack. You've got questions, we've got answers. We appreciate their support, the Circle R group, and Radio Shack's been a friendly supporter of Fort Worth Brahma's hockey the last couple of seasons. They're right downtown Fort Worth. Here's Peter Campbell on the right wing side. Able to play at the center for Sumerek. He skated off, however. There were three white shirts, but a penalty coming up. Would you believe it, Jeff? Nope, it's against the Brahmas. Yeah, that's a tough break for the Brahmas. Schumer gets caught with the rough behind the play. And, uh, you know, that's to Larry. He's a veteran guy. Took advantage of a rookie in that situation. A couple of hacks and whacks going on far side. Talaire got a stick up on Schumer. And Schumer took some offense to Talaire's actions. And he put the glove in Talaire's face. So now the uh, hill that the Brahmas have to climb just got a little bit steeper as they're down two goals. They're late in the second period. And they're going to go back on the penalty kill once again. Peter Sumerick in the box for Fort Worth. Uh, McMullen back in that goal crease. And Jeff, it's not really as much the power play opportunities, but it's a combination thereof. When you have 13 skaters, the fatigue sets in, you're trying to kill off penalties, and you're trying to score goals. Well, yeah. And it's, that's the difficult thing about all this. And, and it's hard to get in a tempo when you're playing special teams every other two minutes or so. The Brahmas can't get rolling at all, and uh, the Ice Bats have been able to take advantage. They've kind of controlled the flow of this game here after the first five minutes of hockey game. And a little pushing and shoving almost along the far side. 4.45 left second period. This is uh, one of the largest crowds in Fort Worth Brahma's history. And they have yet to see the Brahma's nail one home. Now they're shorthanded. So we'll see what happens right now. Immediately a shot right back into the Fort Worth territory. Tilson picks an opening and clears it down. Wouldn't it be nice, Jeff, for a shorthanded tally right now? In deep the forecheck for Fort Worth. The Brahma's trying to make a play. Campbell knocked down. And a great play by the Fort Worth Brahma's. Forcing a stoppage of play. It's actually Jason Clark on the forecheck. And with one against two, was able to force a faceoff deep in Austin territory. What a play by Jason Clark. Yeah, Clark's really improved his all-around game over the last couple years of his hockey career. Early on in the, his uh, Western Pro League days in the East Coast, he was just was a tough guy, a good and a fighter. But now he's an all-around player. He can do it all defensively, offensively, and killing penalties right there. He earned a uh, defensive zone draw for the Ice Bats here. Kept them, puts them on their heels a little bit. But uh, Austin wins a faceoff here. They come the other way. Nine out of his 10 years, 200 or more minutes in penalties. 4,000 plus penalty minutes in his 10 year career. He's got over 300 this year leading the Brahmas once again. LK, the power play again for Austin, trying to increase their lead. Brahmas, Van Volsen lost his stick, jumps into the left of the goal, trying to sweep it free. Brahmas player Van Volsen without a stick. It's only three players now for Fort Worth considering that. Brown shoots, Cooper gets a piece, Johnson trying to clear it, he does. So that allows Van Volsen to go get a piece of lumber. Actually, he's using 
Tilson, uh, Tilson stick, which is the wrong shot, I believe. And he clears it right back to center ice. Tilson's a right-handed shot, and he gave Van Volsen his piece of lumber. Well, the defenseman there wants to hand up his stick to the forward up front because the forward can uh, give a little more puck pressure. So heads up play by Mike Tilson. Probably wondering what uh, side he's going to shoot from in the future. Here's Clark. Can't clear it out. The ice bounce holding in. Smart now. Leaves it free to the near side. Sagan. A shot for the point wide. Brown in after it into the corner. Tetro is there too. In after it. Price clears it to the left wing side. Tetro. 20 seconds to go in the penalty. Centers deflected wide. All Austin right now on the power play. Promise trying to keep it free to the point. Sagan. Plays at the side of the goal. Price. Centers in front. Oh! And it's deflected wide. Good Dangerous play by Adam Davis. In front. Good play by Davis in front to break up that centering pass. Play to the left wing point. Three seconds to go in the penalty. Ice pass, shoot it wide. That's it on the penalty. Promise players back on Zoom. can play to the blue line. A shot in front of the goal. Cleared away beautifully by Dan Villeneuve. And he picks an opening, winds it down. It should be an icing. That relieves some pressure after it's Sumerick and a stop and an icing on the play. 2.34 left second period. The Ice Bats with a 2-0 lead. We'll be back. This is Fort Worth Promise Hockey. Okay. Fort Worth, of course, distributing at Fort Worth. They have been great supporters of the Brahmas and the Fort Worth hockey program for many years. The Brahmas want to thank Coors for their tremendous support. Here's a play from up wing point. Cooper says no, and he's probably going to have some words for his teammates saying, guys, come on, give me a break. I get plenty of work during the season. Take those shots over Mr. McMullen and give him a workout. Shots on goal now favoring Austin, 23 to 10. A two on one, a two to one advantage for the Ice Bats on the shots total. And consequently, that equals a 2-0 advantage on the scoreboard for the Ice Bats. So the Brahms just need to put, a, get, put together a couple good shifts here, have a few good, good things happen to them, and make something happen offensively. Two reasons for that. One, just one power play for Fort Worth. The second, playing a defensive posture for most of the game. Here's a play for Woolard. In tight. In on goal. Can't get the shot off. Rebound. And it's loose. Van Volsen taking a poke at it. McMullen says no. And the Brahmas with two beautiful, glorious opportunities, Willard and Van Volsen. Chad Willard has just been a man possessed tonight for the Brahmas. Screaming up that left side, cutting left to right, got around smart, a backhand move. Tried to go five hole, and McMullen, give him credit, he squeezed it shut. And then Van Volsen on the doorstep for the rebound. But uh, you'll see Willard come fly into your picture here from the left side. He's, like I said, he's been awesome the last 10 games for Fort Worth. And what a scoring chance for Chad. You see it on his, he moved to his backhand. If that shot's on his forehand, he can go high with it. But McMullen knew it was his backhand, so he was able to close the pads. And uh, the rebound opportunity for Van Wilson nearly got by. Good chance for the Brahmas. That's what I'm talking about. Now they need to build on that scoring chance, make something else good happen, and just create some confidence out there. Oh, the uh, Brahmas have possession of their own side. It's Adam Davis able to yank it free on the right wing side for our Craig Johnson. Right wing side pass on the far boards. It's cleared right back into the Fort Worth territory, and Davis controls for Fort Worth. A minute 40, left second period. It is a 2 to nothing. Austin lead. Brahmas gain possession out of their own end. And here comes Davis, left wing side pass to center ice, and Van Volsen able to whack it on his backhand behind the goal. Minute and a half to go in the period. Brian in deep to four check, but the ice bats control on the far boards and play at the center ice. A minute 20 to go in the frame. Austin on the attack. Quick shot, Cooper able to squeeze it as Ryan Anderson, who's played sparingly tonight, let the shot off. Here are the end of Brahma's back. Willard now to center ice. Dangles in his pass broken up. There were three ice bats in the vicinity. A nice job of back checking for Austin. Now here's uh, Craig Johnson for Fort Worth. Pushing the puck to the Austin blue line. Under a minute to go in the frame. And pushed to center ice. Austin on the attack. In across the line. A wrist shot right on. And the save made by Cooper as Greenlaw let it fly. Bats on the attack into the offensive zone. Under a minute to go in the period. They loose in front. Shot wide. Rebound. And it's taken by Fort Worth Brown. Missed it from the left of the goal. And it's time to play a penalty back of the play. What's this all about? They got Craig Johnson for an elbow behind the play after that scoring chance for the bats. Johnson just finishing finishing his check back there for Fort Worth. He came in up high according to the interpretation by referee Gordy Dwyer. So now Fort Worth once again shorthanded and uh, we'll see if we can get a replay there and take a look at that penalty. But uh, Lalon with some obvious uh, stress on his face as his team's down two goals and shorthanded once again. He's going to have to 
work something out there to get his team to kill this penalty off and perhaps creates a shorthanded offense. But uh, the bats up to two nothing with another chance to increase their lead. At uh, their sixth power play of the night, they're one for five so far. Fans are up on their feet. This is the Arby's Minute, which is an exciting activity off the ice here in Fort Worth. A power play for the bat. They try in a center one. Cooper himself dishing it for Clark. And here comes Brahma shorthanded. Up the middle on left wing. Pavo shorthanded for Fort Worth. In. He shoots it off the backboards and wide. The other Brahma player on the right wing side, Bork, is upended. And three-man Austin break. Sagan centers in front. Clark breaks it up. Sails outside the blue line. And all the way down. That's going to do it. The buzzer sounds. Signaling the end of the second period. The Brahmas have gone five consecutive periods without a goal. Two tonight. Trail 2 nothing after 40 minutes of play. The ice pass really controlling the tempo in that second period. They outshoot Fort Worth 12 to 6 in the second 20 minutes of hockey. The only goal of the period coming from Brett Sagan. And uh, Cooper was big again in net for the Brahmas. He's keeping his team in it and, and he's giving them a chance in this third period. So the Brahmas are going to need to go to the room, try to muster up some energy left. 20 minutes left in front of this big crowd. Come back and battle in this third period. Hey, this one ain't over yet, but you don't go anywhere. Run to the fridge, grab a, grab a beer, grab a soda. Of course, grab a Coors <laughs> and a Coke, right? Grab a Coors and a Coke, grab a sandwich. Bring me one if you want, but stick around for this third period. The Brahmas aren't onto this one yet. Center here for our second intermission, and joining me right now is Brahma's goaltender Corey Cooper. And uh, Corey, uh, congratulations! Before we go any further, congratulations on your outstanding season so far. Well, oh, thanks very much, John. Like I said, it's been a bit of a year of peaks and valleys, but uh, you know, coming out of the stretch, we've been putting together some wins, so we'd like to keep that ball rolling. Coop, uh, if the Brahmas are to succeed in the playoffs, let's make no mistake about it, you're going to be the horse that they ride. You've started 56 of the team's 59 games this season. You're 27, 21, and uh, seven coming in. How do you approach the final week of the regular season and the playoffs? We well, just want to solidify a spot in the playoffs and uh, you know find out who your opponent is, and I guess just prepare for them and uh, you know just be ready to go. I guess going into game one, obviously in playoffs, you, you, you want to be able to, to get the first under your belt. So uh, you know we're prepared to face any way we're going to face, and uh, ex excited about with the opportunity of being able to be in the playoffs. Well, tonight, going into tonight's action, the Brahmas tied, uh, excuse me, five points up on the Bojo Shreveport and Mudbugs and the Tulsa Oilers for the third spot overall. Uh, how important is it to you and your teammates to stay in that third spot and potentially face Oklahoma City in that first round rather than the Memphis River Kings? Well, you know what, I just think we want to finish as high as we can and uh, go into the playoffs on a high note. And, uh, you know, by no means are we in them yet. We just have to keep rolling and, and put together wins. If we keep doing that, you're going to win, you know, playing good hockey. And I think that's our goal right now is to go into the playoffs playing good hockey. So if we're doing that, I think, I think we can be successful against anybody. Good. Let's talk about your year personally. Start out a little bit slow, a little bit up and down, inconsistent by your high standards, high, high expectations for you coming into this season based on your past performance. But uh, you've really started to turn things on in the second half of the season. Uh, I think, and I feel a lot of fans probably feel likewise, that you really turned the corner of the All-Star game when you went down, you won the overall skills challenge, then you won the All-Star game MVP. Since then, you've really been rolling, playing your best hockey of the season. Kind of evaluate your year as a whole right now as we enter the final week of the regular season. Well, I mean, you know what, it's, it's kind of weird because I've really taken the same approach all year long. It just seems that the second half of the year has really been where I've been getting the net results. Uh, you know, it's been frustrating, uh, to say the least, the whole the whole season long, is trying to put together winning streaks and whatnot. Is, and the whole team is standard. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, in the second half, we're able to do that a little bit more. And, uh, you know, obviously, it's, it's going to make you make you look a lot better. But, you know, like I said, I haven't changed a thing. Nothing was different the first half of the second half. It's just a matter of uh, getting in, getting a few bounces to go our way. And, uh, you know, you, you just roll it from there. And I think that's kind of what happened. What does Corey Cooper do over the final week of the regular season to prepare this team for the playoffs? And how do you prepare mentally to be the guy known going in that is going to have to to carry the load for the Brahmas? Because, you know, talk around the CHRL, talk around Fort Worth, is that if the Brahmas are going to get something in the playoffs, it's going to be up to 29. What do you do? To, what do you do to prepare for that? 
Well, basically, like I said earlier, you just want to solidify a spot and then and then find out who it is you're going to be going to be facing. And uh, it's going to be a team obviously you've played quite a bit against. So uh, you know you just want to key in and, and what their ten tendencies are and tactics are, and uh, you know just be prepared for that team. Basically, I want to be able to get some rest and come down the stretch and uh, just be prepared to go for, be, be fresh physically and, and fresh mentally as well. How important is home ice in the playoffs? There's been some talk over the last couple of days about having to go to Oak City and play in that building where they put 12,000 in there for the playoffs. For attendance here in Fort Worth is picked up in the second half of the season. How important is home ice advantage going to be in the postseason? Well, no matter what, you're going to have to be able to win on the road if you're if you're going in the playoffs. And uh, you know, no matter where we play, we're going to approach the game the exact same way and, and you know, do the best we can to, to shut down the opposing teams. Uh, home ice is very big. Obviously, you get your fans behind you, and uh, it certainly helps out. But uh, I mean, you got to be you got to be ready to play in both places. Well, Corey, best of luck to you the remainder of the season. Congratulations on your fine efforts so far, and uh, we'll talk to you uh, Tuesday night when we play Memphis. Sounds good, Jeff. Brahma's goaltender Corey Cooper here from the Fort Worth Convention Center. We'll jump out of here for a quick break and come back with, and continue with Fort Worth Brahma's hockey on KFWD Channel 52. Everybody, Mike Eric, alongside Jeff Bowerman. Jeff, the uh, the fans tonight, well, they are large in number, but they've not had a lot of chances to cheer. The Brahmins have yet to score, they trail by two. Yeah, shots on goal there, checking the shots for it. It's 26 for Austin, 12 for the Fort Worth Brahmins. So just 12 uh, pucks sent at Austin goaltender Brian McMullen. And it, it's kind of like the fans are, are sitting on their hands, they're full of nervous energy. They're just waiting to kind of exhale and, and, and explode if the Brahmins can get one past McMullen. The Brahmins down two goals, a little bit flat in that second period. But, Mike, keep in mind, they had two or three good shifts to end the period. Woolard and Van Bolsen, two good scoring chances late. So, Fort Worth should have some confidence coming back to the third. Let's take a look at our uh, Chevrolet scoring summary. And the only goal in the uh, period, Brett Sagan scoring his 24th. That also a power play goal from Price and Brown. Chevrolet, this is a scoring summary brought to you by Chevrolet, the official vehicle of the Fort Worth Brothers. Chevrolet will be there. And that's the score, two to nothing. Yeah, and, and Fort Worth fortunate to, to be down just by two after two periods of play, Mike, as, as Austin had numerous good scoring chances in that second period. Cooper made several big saves. Unfortunately, the one that got by him, Sagan, just all kinds of time and space. He utilized ball, and he just kind of shot it right through Corey Cooper. He got a piece of it with his arm, and it trickled down five-hole. But uh, a tough bounce for the Brahmas, but uh, Cooper's been large in that for Fort Worth, and he's keeping them in it. Well, let's take a look at uh, some of the action in that period. And that goal we talked about. Out. This is a power play opportunity for the Ice Bats. And it really started, Mike. The was unable to get a deep puck, just kind of hung around neutral ice. And Dan Price picks it up. He did a soft drop pass for Price over to Sagan. Sagan just walked, 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 walked. You see Tilson backing up. Just oh. great parting of the great big Red Sea there as uh, Sagan had all kinds of space and he just was able to blast it through Cooper. Here's another look and you'll see the shooting lane that Sagan had to aim for. Cooper out to challenge. He got a piece of the puck, but just not enough. And it was Sagan that uh, got it through Cooper. And the Brahmas had some action of their own. As we take a look here, the Ice Bats have possession of the puck. Yeah, here's another scoring chance for the Ice Bats. They center it across and it was, uh, I believe that was Price on the doorstep. Cooper able to make the save and keep that out, but uh, a good save by Cooper. That's been the story of the game for the Brahmas. They've given up quite a few chances. Cooper's bailed them out on a few, and the Brahmas fortunate to be down two goals headed to this third period. Yeah, it's two to nothing. The Brahmas trail. Corey Cooper's been terrific. Otherwise, it could be a much uh, more difficult hill to climb. We'll come back with more between periods to score. The Austin Ice Bats 2 and the Fort Worth Brahmas 2. This is Fort Worth Brahmas Hockey.
see the end results of Chuck a Puck, a famous promotion they do throughout the league where you throw a puck on the ice. If you get that little center ice circle, you may win a prize, and the fans really enjoy that here in Fort Worth. The score after two, the ice bats two from Austin, the Fort Worth Brahmas nil. Mike Barrick alongside Jeff Harmon. We've had some fun tonight, but not enough. The Brahmas have yet to score a goal this evening. And we'll take a look at the uh, stats tonight, the shots on goal, the power plays, and Jeff, the Brahmas have not scored, and they've been outshot. And in that second period, you'll look through two periods. Austin outshooting the Brahmas 26-12. Shot on goal.